Check, 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 check. One, two. Thank you for that chance. I could have sworn that I had everything properly set up. I've only been streaming a little bit, but thanks for letting me know on that. Obviously, I, could, I couldn't see my voice a moment ago. I don't know. I didn't realize that. But, um... Got it fixed. Alright, so what do I want to do here if the opponent doesn't make me discard, then I have something cool in hand here. So how are you doing, Chance? Okay, I Twitch, worthless. Actually, they're gonna sacrifice it, maybe? And then draw more cards off of that and learn. Look at those, uh, look at that amazing, look at that amazing um, stratagems. All right, so I'm playing this model black deck. Uh, yeah, I just had it completely turned off for some reason. So then the... So then the problem, of course, is... So we're both the, we're both the mono black deck. Hmm. Let's tuck that away. I'm gonna. This is gonna be so ironic. I'm gonna use Turgrid's Shadow against Turgrid. Now, if they get greedy here, please let them drop their land, cast their creature, and then I wipe. No, no, they're looking at their graveyard for some reason to bring something back. Probably that one demon. Pretty awesome. We finished some pretty insane games. Yep, I'm very close to that to that insane finish. Everything. Oops. Oh, look at that. They're gonna bring back a really scary big creature. Actually, I should probably. Oh no, I should do it right now. Magecraft plus. You get to sacrifice your two creatures. Oh snap. And then pass the turn back to me, perhaps. Uh oh, here's the here's the murderous rider. Oh, they're they're looking at her. What is her ultimate? Yeah, her ultimate's very good. So let's see about trying a thing. Okay. Oh, amazing. Oh, so I got so much mana. Look at I got so much mana. So I better be able to use it here. Uh, yeah, that's prophecy. One thing about this deck is that sometimes I deck myself, uh, so it, ha it happens very rarely. Sometimes I deck myself. Now, I'm, I'm going to keep all of these things in my hand just for them to think I've got something amazing. It's just a couple of lands. Eight, nine, ten, they have ten mana, five, six, seven. Well, one thing, one way that they could win, that they could beat me, is if they, if they bring out the Turgrid's Lantern. The only way for me to deal with Turgrid's Lantern... Okay, they didn't bring Turgrid's Lantern, that's fine. Do they have one final exile? Two cards, okay. So, fine, you get a couple of my lands. Get a couple of my lands. They were holding on to that so badly. Oh, and I got two kill spells, fine. Um... There you go, Magecraft that. You get to recast your Brawlmander. I get to ultimate 21 damage. <laughs> I got something perfect for that right there. <laughs> so, yep. That's... This, uh, I don't know if you've been here for me playing this deck before, uh, but basically it's a creatureless deck. I have no creatures in this deck, so I don't have to worry about the opponent's removal, just their Planeswalker removal. Um, I, on the other hand, have a ton of removal. As we saw, I was doing things such as Eat to Extinction, Turgrid's Shadow, Feed the Serpent... Uh, Farika's Libation, and then of course the, if I really, 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 really need it, I have the, um, where did it go? I have the Introduction to Annihilation, 
agonizing remorse. So it's all about killing their creatures. I've also got Ugin for no reason. Um, I've got board wipes. I've got exile effects. I, I most I don't have any like destroy creature. I have pretty much exile because I don't want them to get back their stuff. So yes, that usually costs a little bit more. Yeah, okay, blood on the snow. Yes, it destroys, but it destroys everything. So I mostly have um, exile because I don't want their stuff coming back. And I have plenty of mana rocks to accelerate. And I got the I got the replicating replicated ring where I where I made a million mana. And uh, then finally at the very end, if you do some math. 3 times 7 is 21, they had 20 life, I mage crafted enough times to bring me back from the brink of whatever that was, 3 life or whatever, and then we got it, so, so I'm trying to, I'm on the schedule right now, gold digging still, and okay, I got one of them, very, very good, uh, I'm so I still need to do play 40 lands, cast blue or red. Okay, I'm going to switch over to a mono blue deck. This is how I want to do the uh, the gold digging. And I think, so my, my chase deck is a mono blue deck, but I'm going to add that new Strixhaven card, intro to Annihilation, because it was it's very useful to... I don't have any counter spells in this mono blue deck. Yes, I know, sacrilege. But... Um, it's much more about card draw and just bouncing stuff back to their hand and ominous seas and this is my Jace's seafood salad uh, deck where the the only creatures that are in here are water based creatures a lot of card draw a lot of disruption um, but what am I gonna replace with that intro to annihilation yeah I'm gonna replace I like Tormod's Crypt when they do shenanigans, but I'm going to put that intro to Annihilation. If a Brawl deck doesn't have Ugin, then it's not a proper Brawl deck. I think it's a, it's often a very good deck to have in there. Yeah, definitely. Uh, one of your favorite decks is Vega the Watcher. I have not made any Vega decks, but when people play them against me, they usually craft them very well, and I'm impressed. Um, but I should... I, I don't play a lot of Azorius Control decks. Uh, I think they're cool, but I just don't play a lot of them. But I should make one at some point. So, but you put your Vega is an adventure foretell deck. <laughs> Card draw and control is the way to go, definitely. Okay, here we have what's her name, Svela, I believe. She's the Gruel giant i get to go first very good so okay bubble snare will work well water not so i've got most of the disruption here so let's let's go with that turn one shadow spear people love that freaking shadow spear uh, i can cycle that away right uh, pay to discard this, look at the top, put one of them into your hand, the others. It's got like this weird cycling. So we'll let that pass, let's cycle this away. Let me read this again. Look at the top two cards, put one of them into your hand, and the other to the graveyard. Okay, so you select one to keep, and one to the graveyard. Uh, I don't like either. Don't have that much mana just yet. And what I like to do is play Jace right away, that's fine. If, if he gets shocked or whatever, he's more here for a little bit of scry action, and as a distraction, and it's such a low-cost commander that I can keep bringing it back over and over. Charix is cool for scaring the opponent with a 0-17 crab that can get big. If they summon their Svela, I can then... Hmm, okay, so they're building. That's acceptable. Queen of Revelation will let me draw, but first let's scry. I like both of those. Okay, let's draw, and then we can discard an island. Evolving Wilds, yeah, this is Garden Evolving Wilds. Next turn, they'll probably summon their Svela. There it goes. Are they going to equip the Shadow Spear? 
if they do, I will water knot them. See, if I pay three, one, two, three, I still have three for the water knot, so that'll be efficient. Blue. Water knot. Jeez. Sleep. Um, sure. Poor Svella. Totally exhausted from holding on to that shadow spear. Alright, next turn. Well, actually, I should have played Midnight Clock instead of Heraldic Banner because it would have just been upticking, so not a huge misplay, but I should have played the. Okay, let's play, let's play a big old crabby. What did they foretell? Oops, they probably foretold a destroy artifact. Okay, fine. It still doesn't untap. It still doesn't untap for one. No, it does untap, actually. Uh, but I've got that sleep spell, so... Still have a charmed sleep next turn. So their big idea is that they want to make a bunch of mana to do Svelis ability, which they have enough for now. But if I sleep the board, we can pay three to make a Lith. Okay. Passing. What are you gonna do? Okay, so first of all, let's let's sleep the whole board. Probably respond with Svela making a mana list. Yep, there it is there. Then just uh, keep scrying. Where's the next puzzle? Megalodon. Svela pace. Six, seven, eight, and tap, but she's already tapped, so no need to worry on that. Uh, and then I'll just instantly deliberate and attack with a scary crab. So that's what we will do. Then deliberate to grab the top card. They have a bunch of cards in hand. They've foretold something. What are you for? What do you foretell in red or green? Probably a big old direct damage spell. Ooh, Terror of the Peaks, that's a good one. And then a Majesty, fine. Oh yes, Enthralling Hold. Enthralling Hold will cause them most likely to rage quit. So... So, what I want to do... When they attack with their terror, it'll be tapped so that I can enthrall it and take it. Um, let me scare them by just keep upticking cheese. And then I'll hold up a bunch of mana, attack with Cherix. Let's see if they don't read it. Yeah, don't read it. All right, so then, just a single bubble snare to keep Svela tapped. Might as well just keep adding insult to injury. Well, I probably should have kept that also tapped. If they summon a creature, Terror won't really do much. Their Terror of the Peak won't really do much. Deal damage to my 17 Toughness Crab. If they attack my Planeswalker. Alright, that's a good one. 
your opponent cannot gain life. While at the beginning of your upkeep, quick reverend deals 2 damage to each opponent. This ability triggers only if quick reverend is on the battlefield or if quick reverend is in your graveyard. And you control a giant. Okay, not so bad. Cell is not a giant, right? She's a troll warrior. Alright, so 5 damage to any target doing it to me. Fine. Then they will attack in a rage. Yeah. No, no real need to go after my Planeswalker. It doesn't really do too much amazing stuff. It's just there to distract you, but... Uh, man, Embercleave. Okay, fine. Oh, I get to steal... I get to steal their huge creature with the Embercleave. So, that will be a... That will be a rage quit on their part. Watch this. Uh, yeah, I'll be taking that dragon. Thank you. So now I control... Well, they still control their Ember Cleave, so they can put it back onto their Quake Bringer. So they still control their Ember Cleave. Alright, what's next for me? Um So if I summon a creature, my terror. Their terror, aka my terror can uh yeah they forgot they forgot to pay they forgot that they can pay for their shadow sphere to do stuff shadow spear so anyway whatever i summon will then let the terror destroy that quake bringer beautiful i could summon this megalodon which is hex proof Oh snap. That's a that's a mighty fine dragon you got there. I just have to survive that they have the double draw from the Colossal Majesty. If I get my introduction to Annihilation I can get rid of it. Are you going to double strike your Ember Cleave? Are you going to set up your Ember Cleave on your Warden? That'll be 8 damage, which I can block with my 117. I guess my Kraken, my other Kraken would be my next. They might be forgetting about their... Shadow Spear, because it's under their tapped Civella. Anyway, yes, I want to summon that Kraken, because then I can take out the Warden. Alright, so, as the opponent contemplates their life, I finally notice the opponent's name. An odd platypus. That's pretty fun. So, what are they going to do here? You have a lot of mana to work with, definitely. You can toss your equipment around. If I were them, I would probably put both equipments onto that warden. Oh, never mind, fine. I actually can't attack. I uh, cannot attack unless you control another creature of power 4 or greater. Whoops. Anyway. Let's um, let's get rid of that uh, useless warden. <laughs> Hilarious. Royal will do stuff. <laughs> no, you can't equip. You can't equip your Ember Cleave on the spot. Ooh, they got a million mana off of that ring, but I'm about to get a bunch of...
And we'll have to get a bunch of... Huh. <sighs> Lucky. If that ring hadn't replicated itself, they wouldn't have had enough to deal this much damage, but okay. Isn't that always the case with these red base decks that just instant stuff happens? No. No finesse. Alright, Aura. People love playing Aura. I feel that I see this character so... This... This, uh... Brawlmander so many times. I didn't love either of those draws. So are we going to see a... I, I always see this Brawlmander and I always see a turn one play. Well, okay, fine. But I always see um, people really want this... Brawlmander to work. Keenan, pretty cool. Set up for a big draw. I'll just have a target over here. All right, so if they're playing those colors, obviously they'll have removal. So you bring out Cherex, no matter how big it is, it's just gonna get murdered. Uh, well, I'm utterly vexed. <laughs> Fine, I can recast that relatively easily. Six, I can bring out this serpent, but again, it's just going to be a target. So I think I would rather lose Cherex than my serpent. Or I could just recast Jace uh, until I until I whittle their hand down. They're just going to have a lot of removal from my creatures, so. I need to get my uh, sleep cards and the like. Victory's Envoy. I think that's big trouble, right? Uh, at the beginning, put a plus one on each other creature. Yeah, we're dead. GG, that is a great card. And I didn't get the card that I needed, so... They're just going to plus one themselves very easily. That card's kind of like an auto win, unless you have very good removal for it. Turn two, clock, turn three. I have this Sea Dasher Octopus in the deck, but it almost never pays off. Not sure why. Oh, I have Nico. Nico Eris. I got two draw spells. Let's hold off. I want that enthralling hold. That 
always vexes the opponent. No counter spells, that's good. Next turn, Midnight Clock. They can bring Nico already for zero if they want. They could see Dash at the end of their turn. Brings and Borrow back to the hand, I guess. Single white mana. to the royal will tap creatures such as that owl I could then steal that owl is that too much effort uh oh Kiora can I get rid of that well there's a clock for that Hey there, Stevie. Welcome. Playing my mono blue deck at the moment, trying to get today's gold. I'm very close. Here we got some other stuff. We've got snack chat and all that fun stuff. How are you doing? Oh, well, the opponent contemplates. So let's look at the question of the day. Today's May 15th. Question of the day. What do you consider to be your biggest achievement? Hmm. That is certainly a thing. Well, I assumed I was going to get my fifth mana by now, but... This isn't quite working as I wanted. Alright, so even if they... Yeah, this will be fine. They'll attack probably with that 5-5, five, five, and then I can borrow it. <laughs> Alright, so if they tap out, I can then take... I can be conf confident to take their... Yeah, they're going to drop a land, of course, and then plus one all to their creatures. Fine. Because then I can take your 6-6. Six, six. What do I want to do next? Probably bring a... Probably release the Kraken... It's not a Kraken, it's a Serpent. Valakut. People love that, but doesn't really do that much. It reduces one damage. Uh, it reduces the damage and also gives things ward one. Okay, that will help me ward one. But actually, I need to save that for when they bring out their Kraken. Alright, well. Let's just bring out a big scary creature. They're at six mana, they need seven for that Kiora spell, which then I can annihilate.
Miko with two. What do these things do again? Uh, you make X shards up to one target creature you control cannot be blocked whenever this creature returns to its owner's hand. Minus two damage to target creature. For each card you've drawn this turn, I'll create a shard. And shards let you scry, then draw. No mana to scry. So what did they do? They did a minus one? Or a plus one. Anyways, they're out of mana, so they can't giant killer. I can see Dasher. Let's see. So the serpent is is completely unblockable. Target a non-human creature you control. This is an illusion. Oh, I don't... I don't control... Yes, I do. I'm controlling that. Okay, that's a bug. Yeah, I think that's... I think that was a bug that it didn't let me do my Sea Dasher Octopus. Anyway, let's drop a bunch of cards. Cool. So I guess I don't really need those extra lands right there. Slowly rebranding yourself. Sorry if I didn't see that. I did see it pop up, but yes, rebranding yourself. I, I can see that with Stevie's Mysterious World, which is a very fun title. I like that. Um, so it sounds like it's going well. What do I want to do here? I want to tap that owl. Oh, okay. They decided to just go wide instead. Alright, so... They're at 15. Let's tap out a flyer. Resolve. I have enough to pay for it. Is, is this where their counter spell comes into play? they're forgetting that they can tap okay they're gonna bounce it back that's acceptable didn't take 10 years for them to do that however all right next let's we're we're dead anyway unless they do the math unless they don't do the math okay that's good Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's eight. That's eight damage in. If I don't get any blockers, which here's a blocker, but they'll be able to tap it out anyway. Yeah, let's just put out over here a distraction. I'll probably probably lose if they. I'll probably lose next turn. Uh, but let's see if, if my Planeswalker can be enough distraction for them to... Actually, wait, that was, that was not a blink. Never mind. I thought that was a blink. Never mind. I'm not dead yet. I thought it was a blink that they were going to get the Owl back, and that would have been lethal. But it was just bounce it back to the hand, so... Even better. Oops, Sphinx, but that uses up all of their... Well, they're going to bounce back whatever. Uh, Serpent? Sure. Bounce back your own spirit. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna bounce back their own spirit. Fine.
I guess this is the end. I need... I need that sleep spell. That's the only thing that's gonna save me. That's not a sleep spell, so okay. Game over. Well, I guess I should have jaced and then done that. Whoops. Yeah, none of those would help either, so... it if I had if I had just gotten that sleep spell that would have given me one more turn okay we're close then we'll take the first break and then we will do the the next item on the agenda So before we get to it in a little while, who is interested in the code giveaway? Let me know there in the chat so I can check if I've got enough. But if you are interested in the Magic Arena code giveaway, let me know in the chat so that, so that I know. So I don't play anything until turn three, just very slow. They're gonna do theirs right away. You are interested in the code, all right, very good. It's coming up very soon. I'm about to finish the gold digging in just a moment. And then we'll move on to that. All right, so the, it's pausing for something, either a removal spell or village rights. Everyone always has that ri village rights when they're in black. All right, let's bring out Jace as a distraction. I definitely want that cure best of sea god. But that's seven whole mana. I have the ramp for it. Artifacts and enchantment spells cost one. Fine. Fine. Like I said, the, my Planeswalker is more of a distraction than... It does help with the scry and such, but then, you know, I'm still at 23 life. And then they have that... As for myself, let's do that. Next turn I can Skyclave. Three, four, five, three, four, five, six. I can do six. I can Sky, I can Skyclave next. Ooh, people love that. Okay. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm sure we'll make it. Another pump spell. Five, six, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're like on a two-turn clock or something. I guess what I'm expecting here is that the... I'm going to get Kiora, but then... 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. If I cannot remove Kinan... Yeah, that's game over right there. GG. So it was a bit of a Voltron deck on theirs. Uh, kind of aggro Voltron, I guess. And there we go. We're very close. So let's try that. 
Next game. So what's the favorite card that everyone likes from Strixhaven? Oh, look at that. They're playing the turn one commander, and they get to go first. Amazing. So I just did a video. Hopefully everyone saw it and thumbs up it. Are you all getting my notifications about my new videos on YouTube? Did you ring the bell so that you could... Ooh, that's surprising that they didn't play their black mana turn one. Very surprising. Anyway, they should... Uh -huh. Oh, that's a good that's a good play. Well, they could have they should have played their commander there. Oh, they want to play that one. Okay, fine. Release set. Uh, when you regain life, pay whatever. Put a plus one counter on each creature. Okay, so they're gonna go that way. Nah, that's easy mode right there. So easy mode. Alright, so they're playing green so far, so that probably means they can do the rapid bite. Or one of those, they're gonna gain another life. They can put another plus one. Alright, let's put them to sleep. Ooh, enthralling hold is going to be the truth. So, yes, please put another counter, or fine, you got it. That's an 8-8. Eight, eight. Boot Nipper with Death Touch, but I've got an unblockable Serpent. Shadow Spear, Life Gain. All right, so here's what we'll do. First of all, first of all, um, surprise Pikachu face, because this is unblockable. They've got a death touch creature, but this is unblockable. Number one, and then second said Pikachu face is now I have your commander. Yeah. Okay, my adversary, death touch, menace, etc. Alright, am I able to do stuff with Lisette whenever you gain life? Well, I'm never gonna gain life, I guess. Um, 8 plus 7, that is. Um, 14, that's 15 damage so close to to lethal <laughs> this music sounds too scary anyway uh, let's um, tap their 4-3 That's lethal. There we go. <laughs> Wandering Archaic. That is that one uh, colorless card, isn't it? Let me look it up for a moment. Well, the, this, chase, this chase deck hardly wins, but when it wins, it's fun. Usually it wins when I steal people, people's creature and use it against them. So I was curious here, how many cards in the world of magic have the name Wandering Balan, Wandering Knight, Deadly Wanderings, Far Wanderings, Wandering Archaic, Wandering Champion, Wandering Eye. Oh, this is one of these creatures that 
is an illusion, even though it's got I in the title. Did you all know that there's that there's really only three creatures in the world of magic that are creature type I? If you go over here, type I. Right here. There's Evil Eye of Ormsbagor, Evil Eye of Orborg, and Eye Twitch. Those are the only cards in the world of magic that have a creature type of eye. Evil Eye has been around for a long time, all the way back from Legends. Back when it was Summon Evil Eye. None of your creatures can attack except for Evil Eyes. Evil Eye can only be blocked by walls. Well, that's interesting how the old spelling and such, right? It says nothing can attack except Evil Eyes. Evil Eye can only be blocked. You know, the grammar of it back then was different. Nowadays, non-eye creatures you can roll, control cannot attack. Evil Eye of Orms by Gore cannot be blocked except by walls. There's a 5th edition version. That's the one I have. There's the 5th edition version with very different abstract art. Back then they still had... They, they didn't fully figure out, except for Evil Eyes, creatures you control cannot attack. Now the official is non-eye creatures you control cannot attack. And then the most latest Time Spiral version not, has the correct text. Non-eye creatures you control cannot attack. And then the second eye was this one. Evil Eye of Urborg. Non-eye creatures you control cannot attack. Whenever Evil Eye becomes blocked by a creature, destroy it. So if they block a 6-3, it automatically gets destroyed. And then the latest one just came out in Strixhaven. Black mana, I bat, 1-1 one, one flying, when this dies, learn, so go get another card. So there is your magic trivia of the day. There's only three eyes in the world of magic. Wait, I was going to look at the Wandering Archaic. What's oh, the double-sided one? Oh, okay. So on the one hand, it is an avatar that is fa that is a 4-4. Four, four. Whenever an opponent casts an instant or sorcery, they may pay two. If they don't, you may copy that. So, oh, that's really fun. So if they if they do their own opt or whatever, you get it for free. If they do their own, uh, like, destroy this creature, and they don't pay for it, you get to destroy their creature. That's fun. And then on the other side, explore the vast lands. Each player looks at the top five cards of their library, reveals a land card and or an instant or sorcery, puts the cards they revealed this way into their hand at the rest at the bottom. Each player gains three life. Uh, so horrible card, unless you're playing commander and you're with a friend or two-headed giant or something. So if you're playing any other format, you don't want that card. I mean that side of it, but the front side. I think it's very cool. So that's a cool... That is a cool pick on Strixhaven. You'll have to watch. You'll all have to watch my... My latest YouTube video to determine my favorite Strixhaven card. It is five of them, actually with some honorable mentions. Because I can't pick... I can't limit myself. But there we go. We got our gold digging in just about an hour. And we got a, a pack right there. So, um, I'm going to do the first break, and then after the break I'm going to do snack chat, and then code giveaway, and then more gameplay. Oh, this is cool. The Mu Yang Lin Exquisite Sleeve. This is exquisite. I'm not going to pay 4,000 gems for it, though. We have some packs to crack, uh, one pack a little bit later. All right, everyone, so let's take our first break. Um, think about your least favorite magic card of all time. And then right after the break, we'll have some snack chat. Yeah, some snack chat hype as well as some hype like that. So we'll be back in just a bit.
All right, everyone, we are back. Let's do the um, next item on the agenda, snack chat. So here is the snack of the week. And as I said before, I consider beverages snacks. Uh, what about you? Do you consider a beverage a snack? Uh, so here I have Palaner Spezi. This is a... Um, this is an orange cola. No, I cannot read German. I can fake it though. And uh, we have, I have some more words down here. Kavin Haltig Orangen Limonade Meat Cola. So clearly that is saying caffeinated orange lemonade with cola, right? So if, you know, if, if we know English, we know a little German, vaguely. Uh, hey there, Mark, just in time for the snack chat, exactly. Um, so this is going to be the snack here, the Palaner Spezi. And what else do we have to see here? So they have a big old label in English. Um, orange soda with cola. Blah, blah, blah. Ingredients, etc., etc. Don't really care. But there it is there, and it's coming straight from Product of Germany. Manufactured by Polliner Braret GmbH. I always see that in German stuff, but I don't know what it means. Munchen Deutschland, Product of Germany. So, um, yeah, that's what I'm about to open here. So, what is that? Just like recycle logo, I guess. Anything else, anything else interesting in the packaging? Uh, Narwit Gabin Pro 100 milliliters. I can what 25. This seems to say 25 euros. Anyway, no, not 25 euros. 25 0 0.25 euros. That's what that says there. So this was 25 cents. All right. So I'm gonna open this up, take a taste, and then we'll get back to some gameplay and so forth. So you're late. It was Anwin's first birthday. Uh, did I get that picture of the cake? Am I imagining it? Um, yeah, so happy birthday to Anwen. And uh, one whole year, can we believe it? I remember when we were on the stream last year and in the middle of COVID. If we think back, May 15, 2020, and we were right in the beginning of the horror movie of COVID, and we didn't know how things were going. And and when is born? So wow, that's a whole year. All right, so here is the orange cola from Germany. So from my side with the light, well, I can do it on this way. Don't drop this all over my laptop. Um, but you can see the color of this, whoops, hold on. The color of this looks like that. It smells like cola. I don't tastes very much orange. It's very, very, very subtle. Don't really, I also don't really taste much cola flavor. I taste the carbonated water. I don't know, is this expired where all of the flavors are diminished? I, I taste the sweetness best by 1031 2021. So still it's good by the end of the year. But I I taste more of the sweetness than orange flavor. It's there, but very subtle. And even the cola flavor, I think because the orange is fighting with the cola, I don't taste too much of the cola. I think I taste the cola more than the orange, but it's not as orange flavor as I would have liked.
out of my five point scale, I'll give this a two and a half, not because it's bad compared to that boba drink that I had that I gave it a 1.0 because that was bad. I'm giving this a low grade because I just don't feel that it's living up to what it's supposed to be. Uh, orange, orange cola. Now, obviously, like I said, I don't really know German, but from what I think that I'm reading down here, it seems like it's saying orange, hold on, we're going to focus in just a moment. Orange lemonade. I think it says orange lemonade right there. Orange, orange lemonade, right? That, that's probably saying orange lemonade. So maybe the lemon is fighting with the orange, which is fighting with the cola. And according to the caffeine, I don't know, does that mean caffeinated? Caffeine hal TJ? Well, why don't we just go to the magic of the internet and look it up, right? Uh, we'll do that for a moment and then we'll get back to the gameplay. But at the very least, here's a fun international beverage. All right, so first of all, let's put in the first word here, which was caffeine no wait caffeine 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 hal hal tige from english no not from english to spanish from german german to english cd e english Coffee, caffeine containing. That's how it's spelled on the can. C O F E N. Is it saying it's actually coffee containing or caffeine containing? I'm going to assume caffeine. Caffeine containing. And then the second thing here orange. Orange and limon aid. Orange and lemonade. Orange aid. Orange aid. What? What is orange aid? Le lemonade. It's a type of orange drink. Orange soft drinks are carbonated orange drinks. So it's an orange drink with carbonation. Orange aid. Not orange plus lemonade. And then meat cola is with cola. So there we go. We cracked the code. It is a caffeine-containing carbonated orange cola drink. But not very amazing flavor. Put that there. So that was Snack Chat. I have another snack that we'll do in a little bit. For a little bit later, we've got another snack chat to, to do, so um, we'll do that soon enough. How's everyone doing so far? Let's share. Uh, let's share the. Um... <laughs> My camera's moving because the cat is on the other side. Let's see over here. Can we? Can we put the cat on the camera? So I've got here in my laptop, right? And right on the other side there is, is the cat being cat-like. Even self-learning Houdini on Houdini Indie. That's interesting. What is that? That that that's that's not Houdini like the like the magician sort of escape artist thing, right? It's it's like a, a language or something? Programming language? He is way too comfortable, but then he's knocking the webcam over. All right, so code giveaway. We're going to do the code giveaway. Um, we'll do the code giveaway as we usually do. So, okay, no. 
Chance and more of you that are there are interested in the code giveaway. So Chance, you're you're in the um, you're in the official VM Campos Discord, right? The link down there at the bottom in the procedural creation software, but the free version. Okay, so yeah, that, that's what I thought that it's a uh, that it is a programming language. Um, so if anyone is interested in in um, If anyone is interested in uh, winning a game code, we're going to do it in the Discord. So let me switch over to the webcam viewer. Not the webcam, web browser viewer. And in the contests, I'm going to put a prompt and then make it active for people to answer. It is currently deactivated for people to answer. And uh, first three answers will get a game code, courtesy of Wizards of the Coast. And the best way to, to put the answer is by um, putting either the link or the name to the Discord answer or, or page as in when I ask the question, you want to do brackets, exclamation point, and then, I don't know, planes, brackets. Uh, that will then trigger it, displaying it. Since there's a million planes, it might take a moment. But, okay, if we had uh, evil eye. I, I think I know why. Ah, never mind. This is not going to work here because I believe they just changed the, um, the Discord bot to um you have to do an update on the discord bot so i it's not going to do that um you can uh, you can put the link you can put the link to the to your answer so i'm going to put the question and then people can answer if they want to win a game code right after I start it here so start and then the question will come right here share the MTG card with the weirdest art so I'm gonna turn on the channel put your answer in there and the first three answers We'll get a game code. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. So first three answers. Win a game code. And um, in the meantime, we have some amazing cakes here that Alicia made. Amazing. <laughs> Looks so good. So those are chocolate, not Twix, I'm sure, but something like Twix. And um, lots of sprinkles. And then this seems to be a mini cake with frosting in between, and then more on top, plus more cookies on top. And then a very cool serving tray. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. That's really cool, making me making me want some. And then here we have some crisps, which are chicken flavor. I've had such of those once or twice. I thought they were a little bit too weird for me. I'm not expecting to 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 taste uh, chicken flavor in a crisp, aka a chip. But um, I've had one of ham flavor, and also I thought it was a little weird. I'm not expecting meat flavored flavors in my chips but is this a, is this a famous brand i can't see i can't see the full name of it there's there i go again looking at the other parts of the photo that people don't care about so like there's a little cow over there what is that cow is that your is that your salt and pepper shaker perhaps Is 
is Alicia in a cake, an accomplished cakester. And she can whip up these great cakes um, on the spot. The cow's an ice cream scoop. <laughs> That's cute. Speaking of cute, okay, let's do this. Let me move my web camera over here. Uh, this is unbelievable. Let me do this full screen. If we go right here, look at this. Well, he already moved. But the cat, the cat's head was all the way down. Uh, this, is a, this is a type of webcam that thinks I want to go portrait. But look at that. He's right there underneath the monitor and everything. Yeah, sorry if it's all kind of bouncing around, but when you change the orientation of it, it thinks that you want to go portrait. All right, we got some answers over here. Let's look at some of these answers that people are, um, yeah, I'll try to, I don't think I can see this camera, this web camera that I'm on is the newest one that I've had, but I'm kind of not impressed. And I've said this before, I'm not impressed that it does not have a lock exposure mechanism. You know, the exposure can go up and down weirdly, and there's no way to lock it, which is very weird for a camera of this quality or this generation, number one. Number two is apparently there is also not a way to lock the orientation because in theory I can go into portrait mode like this by a simple flicking of it, but I want to obviously lock it so that it's not flipping all the time. So I don't recommend this cam, unfortunately. It's the Logitech Stream Cam. I think there's other, other ones, but... I already ranted about that before. Okay, let's look at some of these answers. So, so Chance, aka Azalear, uh, said uh, Frog Tongue is an example of a card. Oh, yeah, that's a Phil Folio art from back in the old days. This is an actual magic card. This is not a fake card. Frog Tongue, one, one green mana, enchant a creature. This is from Tempest, way back in 1997. When Frog Tongue comes into play, draw a card. Enchanted creature can block creatures with flying. So it gives a creature reach nowadays, and you draw a card. It's an aura, enchant a creature, draw a card, gives a creature reach. But why can't I get one? Sniveled Squee. All the bugs here got wings. Back on the uh, the Weatherlight Saga. With the classic artist Phil Folio, him and Kaya Folio used to do art back in the nineties. I actually met him at Comic Con, the last Comic Con I think in twenty nineteen, and he was also the team that did. Um, that one Kickstarter that I showed about um, Kumbaj, which is that those two witches on the uh, playmat. So that's that's one that's a vote by chance. Okay, cool. That earns you a um, a game code. I will make a note on my on my document to pass a code on to you, courtesy of Wizards of the Coast. A note right there. And then the second entry by Aiden, we got Desecrator Hag. Okay, let's see that one. Ooh, that is pretty freaky artwork. I like the colors. Uh, and that mouth is pretty horrific. So this is originally printed on Eventide. Let's go back to the original Eventide printing. Um, I always, in my mind, when I was first getting back into Magic and I was reading the names of these sets that I never played, I kept kind of thinking it in my head, Event Tide. Obviously, it's not correct because it only has one T, but Even Tide. And even that doesn't quite make sense to me because I didn't play during this generation. What does it actually mean, Even Tide? Because there's Sh Shadow Moor, Even Tide. What else? Lorwyn. 
How does that how does that block go? Lorwyn, Eventide, Shadowmoor, and one more. Uh, anyway, we get two and two more mana. We get a creature hag. How many hags are there in the world of magic? We'll look that up in a moment. When Desecrator Hag comes into play, return to your hand the creature card in your graveyard with the highest power. If two or more cards are tied, you choose one of them. So four mana, get a 2-2. Two, two, and you bring back a big creature from your graveyard. And you get Nightmare Fuel artwork. So thanks for that card. Loose Earth is not a burial, but an appetizer. That is some freaky artwork. So a um, couple of things I want to look up. First of all, so, OK, here we go. We had first lore win, October 2007. Then came morning tide. February, that's that's a big gap of time compared to nowadays from October to February. So February 1st, 2008, morning tide. Then we went to the scary side of the world or something, right? Shadow Moor. That was three months later. And then two months later almost three, was Eventide. So that was that block back then, full of Kithkin. What was in there? Kithkin and the first sh shapeshifters. And that was the first set that didn't have humans. And supposedly it was a low selling set because it didn't have humans. But it was also supposed to be a very complex set that caused a shift in magic design. And out of curiosity, how many hags are there in the world of magic? Brian Hag, only nine. Brian Hag. Quentin Hoover art. Fate Unraveler from Commander 15. William Hedge Mage, that's amazing art. Todd Lockwood. Hag Hedge Mage. Hag Shaman. Harvest William. Nils Ham. Nils Ham reminds me of some of the Sed McKinnon artwork, but but earlier. Nip Gwillian. Scarwood Hag, I remember that one from the dark. And Stalker Hag. So pretty much just in Shadowmoor block. Although they reprinted Desecrator Hag for Commander later. In 2018. So 2018 is the last time we got a hag printed in magic. All right, so I'm going to end the contest for the moment. You two won a card. We'll have another one a little bit later on. Get back to some gameplay. I forgot to say actually one more thing. Here's a freebie for people if you didn't see this. I just saw it right now earlier, right before the break. Wizards of the Coast apologized for their recent crashing and so forth by giving a code, experimental overload. Right before the break, I plugged it in and I claimed it right now. So if you didn't know, um, those of you that are here at the moment, you can activate that code and get 2,000 experience and a booster pack. So that was announced on the 12th. I missed the announcement, but I was browsing the site right now and, and I saw it. So claim that to also get something from directly from Wizards. So 
I'm going to open this and then we'll start the event. Got a rare wild card, very nice. Got a nice looking duress, which I'll never play. And an illuminate history, which I'll never play. All right, then the second booster. Beautiful art on that thrill of possibility, but I'll never play it. And Lord Hold Apprentice, cool art. And Silver Quill Silencer. Three. It's a two mana three two. When it enters, choose a non land card name. Whenever an opponent casts a spell with that chosen name, they lose three life. And you draw a card. Ooh, I like that. I like that. So um they lose three life. So it's it's negative mage craft because when the opponent casts the spell, they lose life and you draw a card. So I like that card. All right, so here is the college cup. Blah, blah, blah. In this event, the spells will be flying fast. Whenever you cast or copy an instant, da, 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 bring a 60-card singleton deck to take advantage and claim victory for your first win in this event each day. Your Strixhaven college theme Slee Avatar pet will earn points for that college. After three events, the highest-scoring college will earn a special card sleeve for everyone in Arena. For more details. Okay, so... You have... You... It's just basically saying when you enter the event, they're going to track about which college and avatar is the most popular, which I don't really have any of them. Yeah, I don't have any of the college pets. I have Kinan. It's going to be weird to finally change my avatar after all this. I've always used Vivian since I got into arena, but I am going to use Killian here for this event, so that'll be weird. And so I'm, I'm representing Silver Quill, and the So let's uh, get into this right here. Um, yeah, I think there was a Sarah Avatar too, but I don't. I don't think I've, I've ever been able to get it. Let's see here. Um, we have Evil Mage. We, who else do we have in here? Watley. Where did you see it? Oh yeah, right here. Yeah, I guess I do have a Sarah Avatar. Somehow. Cool. That was that fibble thip. I have ah, the living are just so needy. Beasts are much more reliable than humans. Huh. Uh Killian doesn't have any voice. Tell me you're not impressed. I am perfection in both body and mind. Neither does fibble thip. So they're all they're all cool. I just was always used to using Vivian, but I'm gonna use Killian just to just to put more points and represent Silver Quill. For this event. Okay, so um Let's get to the event. So the event it's a 60-card singleton deck, which is vaguely a brawl deck, but without a brawlmander. 
So, um, first win here is, well, it's all, it's just all the alternative art, which I don't really care about, but it's an event and let's battle people. So let's see if the only one that I have a single tin is Rin and Seri, but I'll probably switch it. You know what? Actually, let me, let me set up my Professor Onyx deck because it's already singleton, but I just need to make a little change. Change the format into... Oh, they changed that. It used to be on the bottom left. Now they have it in the middle, huh? And that's a bug, right? Why is the light going through the box? Anyway, change that over to singleton. And then put Onyx back in the main deck. So there we go. Got a... We have, oh yeah, okay. And then I have to take out Arcane Signet because it is not a Brawl deck. Thanks for reminding me. Computer. Instead, we will put... Um, guess the wheel. Okay. All right, let's go for the... Let's go for this event. Let's go for four wins. Let's see who we run into. So this this event, you you can get some fun little sleeves and stuff. But then also they they count. They're counting who's using what avatar to determine the best silver, the best uh, Strixhaven College. All right. So got some card draw. Got some. Mana rocks. Now, part of what this event is also that you automatically, whenever you cast a spell, draw a card. So you're going to get some automatic card draw. So I bet you you're going to see so many opts in these decks. My third turn, I'll probably Memory Leak, which will draw me a card. Even though I should probably build my mana base. Uh, hasty Dinosaur. <clears throat> this is the... what's it called? The College Cup event. And as you can see here, as soon as you Magecraft, you automatically draw a card. Plus, I get to see what they've got. Okay. Uh, five damage to a creature. I, I don't have any creatures, so I don't have to worry about that. Double vision enchantment. We probably want to get rid of the double vision enchantment. Then... Third mana, Farika's Libation. Let's see what I do here. If they put all of their... If they Thrill of Possibility, they'll draw a card, and then they could still Rimrock Knight. Right, that's what they're going to do, so they're going to Rimrock Knight. And probably Thrill of Possibility, so they're going to draw two off of that. That's pretty efficient. Four damage, whatever. Next turn, I can Farika's Libation. And they're going to get actually that, which is way better. Alright, so that gives something haste. So, if I pay three... no, nope, I should get rid of one of their creatures. Shadow's Verdict will be a nice board wipe. So hopefully I can survive for that. Yeah, I don't have any creatures, so I don't have to worry about that. Pigment Storm. They might summon their Knight and Thrill of Possibility, which will... Maybe discard a card, and they could draw three cards off of that. Okay. Pretty efficient.
Come on, summon it. Okay, perfect. So, are they going to haste it? Yeah, they're going to haste it. They would rather deal three damage. Fine. Is it just me, or does, does this sound a little bit louder than usual? The gameplay. Maybe because that extra emblem there is making some extra sound, and I didn't properly calibrate it. Single black man is that a lightning bolt? Now there's no lightning bolt in standard. All right, right here I could summon Onyx, but I should instead I would rather replicate that, but let's get rid of that weird. Down to eight life. Okay. Next turn I've got to summon Professor Onyx. Because in a mono red deck I'm very close to death. Great bombardment. Whenever your creature you control with power two or less attacks, it deals one damage. Okay, so I'm dead right here. Right? Plus three plus treasure. So they still have one red mana. That's gonna be infuriate, I bet you. Plus three. Oh, okay, hasty. So three, four, five. Okay. So no more board wipes. Um, I can spinning wheel. Yeah, let's let's do this. I just I'm just waiting for my next board wipe. But spinning wheel, draw a card, annihilation, that'll do its thing. Okay. Uh, let's keep that tapped. And then let's. Now I can't do either of those because I'm dead. Okay, well, uh, I'll just play it conservatively because I, I'll just be able to tap, there's, tap things down with my spinning wheel. Come on. Uh, blood on the snow. Whoops. Seven, eight, nine, ten mana in total. Four, four, five, six. But I can't do two things with Professor Onyx. Um, I can crack my golden egg. I'm gonna have to crack the golden egg. One, two. I think we'll be safe. I hate to give him this card, but let's exile that. Oh, there's Ugin. Okay, that's gonna save me. So if I can just not take six damage. So hopefully no Ember Cleave or some X spell that takes me out. But you never know with a mono red deck. I can squeak in the final bit of damage. Such as a shock. All right, here, here's our final demise. Just because, again, what do you expect with a mono red deck? Two damage here, left with two with two damage. There it is. There's the final burn bright. Amazing. Yeah, 
Yeah, Replicating Ring is cool. Eventually, after X amount of turns, you get 8 mana. So, that's pretty fun. Alright, so let's try that again. Hopefully we don't get another cheap red player. Sorry, no offense people, but you know if you're a red player, you know it's a cheap deck, so let's go on. I've got the second um, snack that we will look at in a little bit. We did our first snack, which was the German cola. Hey, when did that... Look at that avatar come out. Look pretty cool. Alright, so... We don't get a free mulligan on this event, do we? Nope. Alright, green... Green and white. Actually, green and... well, green. So what are some aspects of your morning routine that you are able to get done quickly? Mono green stompy. Let's see. Let's see if they're gonna cultivate. This is gonna be their heart's desire here if they cultivate exactly so double land drop this is going to be like nine damage but then i can shadows verdict it or finishing blow it so one day they will tell their descendants i cultivated right on curve for me uh, what's next there you go good thing I saved uh, this um... actually I didn't save it I did it wrong finishing blow would have been able to get rid of that planeswalker but I did it wrong okay anyway um... let's bring this out let's set up removal Okay, no problem. Actually, yes, problem, because they're just going to sacrifice both of their. I call, and Decoria answers. Yeah, it sounds like the sound mix is a little bit higher than normal. Pausing on green. deal five damage to me so um great hinge is always good
crystalline giant. Yeah, if I don't get my board wipe next turn, I'm definitely dead. Alright, GG. Now the funny thing is that this event is still just a singleton event, and I'm playing a deck that, on Brawl, wins, but it's not quite coming together for this event for some reason. Kasanezumi is the opponent. Yeah, this is another mono red deck. I'm not in the mood. <laughs> well, let's see. The different avatar did all the difference. Uh, okay, stolen by the Fey, double vision. People love that double vision. However, what they've got in their hand is kind of worthless because it's a little bit more removal on their side. They don't have any blue mana. Well, actually, the replicating ring is blue mana. They don't shock. Shot can deal 3 damage, but I'm sure they want to save it for the really scary stuff. Stolen by the Fey won't affect anything because it deals with creatures. I have no creatures. Goldspan Dragon is good, but Turbid's Shadow will take care of it such a good card. It's got haste and it makes you a treasure, so pretty impressive. So overpowered nowadays. Bounce that back to my hand. Fine, I can recast it. So they're going to have a flyer. There's a double green for their flyer. All right, I can afford two, four, five, six. I can afford to Liliana here. They're going to have to discard something. They'll probably. What are they going to get rid of? Probably stolen by the Fae. Or maybe they're going to really hold off to use that Stolen by the Fae. No, they, they wanted to get rid of Shock instead. Okay, they're going to toss a 3-3 three, three Flyer. Going to draw a card off of that. So if they bring out their Flyer and they do their Wrath, that won't be amazing. Oh man, if I had what the mana for that, I could also wipe out that, but that's fine. Alright, so the Scorched Earth policy would be to take their three creature damage my Planeswalker and then do their Wrath to really get rid of it, but then they'll get rid of their own creature, so let's see what they do. Oh, your bravery is adorable. Yeah, that's exactly what they wanted to do. Fine. I do hope that reminds them it does it to their own creature too, so that was a lot of effort. Alright, well, let's see what else is in their hand. 
Exile the top X cards for each land. Create a treasure for each blue. Draw a card. Oh, that's kind of amazing. Stole it. Draconic. This additional cost. Exile an instant. Deals X damage to non-creature. Who cares? Okay, so that's the best thing to get rid of. Next. As for myself, let's draw two, three cards. Even better. Supplies. Draw more cards. There we go. Five, six, seven, eight mana in total. Probably what I'll do is exile their ring so that they don't get a million more mana for some other weird X spell. Should I have Egg, yeah, let's exile their graveyard now. <laughs> Fine. All right, let's drop a land. Actually, uh, yeah, then let's exile their ring so they don't have so much mana. Two lands in total. I can eat a food or crack that supply. I have seven cards in hand. <laughs> no, kitty, what are you doing? All right, so I think more card draw will be more good. Bad grammar aside. Got a lot of removal in hand. And a coveted prize, so I can go get Liliana. And let's do the guaranteed part. Let's go get Liliana. I mean, Professor Onyx, not Liliana. Professor Onyx. We'll pass, have a lot of removal. No, kitty, you're messing with the microphone. And then I can drop, what do I need to drop here? Um, oh, they're gonna, they're gonna haste in, Never mind. that's not so bad. Draw three, what do I discard? Um, everything's so good, what do I discard? I guess that introduction to prophecy, discard two, fine. Prophecy plus, well, I guess don't need another, yeah, keep the tutor. Have four mana left so I can eat the food. How did they, how did they build up their own hand as well? Nine, nine mana. Have a feed the swarm in. I mean, yeah, feed the serpent in case they summon a troublesome creature. Okay, so it's Silver Quill versus Quandrix. Uh, my uh, Killian. Killian car uh, Killian Avatar versus Zimone. We both have a million mana and we both have a million cards in hand. How will this end? Well, Professor Onyx is gonna help Magecraft me more to victory, hopefully, but of course with their red direct damage, she might not survive. And they're still holding on to that stolen by the Fae. They're still hoping to bounce a creature back to my hand with X amount of mana, but there's no creatures coming. Okay, Nazari, Dean of Expression. Let's not even care to read it because it is about to get... ...sacrificed. And it is not a target. 
have two mana left. All right, so let's hope this doesn't get counterspelled. I'll keep that four mana open for Feed the Serpent. I can cast that right now. Yeah, let's do that right now, actually. Discard two. No, 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 no. If we look down here, look at the cat right here. And then the microphone's right here, and it's fuzzy. And then the cat's right here, and it's fluffy. So, natural enemies. All right, so they're thinking very hard. They're finally gonna, yeah, they finally threw away their, <laughs> they finally threw away their um, Stolen by the Fae and Sublime Epiphany. Well, if they kept the Sublime Epiphany, they could have bounced back my Onyx and done stuff, but we'll see. Will I get to her ultimate? Yeah, I don't think it's going to make it. They're already looking at it, so... Full damage. What did I tell you about red players? And then we've got a final blue... Use up your blue, fine. Um, is there any way to get it back from my graveyard? There's no cards in standard, like, cranial archive that will get stuff back from your graveyard, unfortunately. In black. Double draw. How else can I win the game? I guess we can. I have 19 cards left in hand. Alright, I got two foods. Discard two cards. Fine. Kasa Nezumi. Nezumi, I think, means mouse in Japanese. What does Kasa mean? Wondering. Ooh, that's nice. We were just talking about that. There we go. There's there's Chance's favorite card here. Um, whenever an opponent casts a spell, if I don't pay two, they get to they get to copy it as well. That shouldn't be too bad. I have to pay five mana with Ugin to get rid of it. But yeah, please copy my feed the serpent spell. That would be nice. Here I can pay zero. It is a blue illusion, to my knowledge. This is a blue illusion. So exile each permanent with mana X with less that's one or more colors. Now, what actually, what do we think here? Um, I believe I can minus zero with Ugin, because tokens are zero casting cost, and the, f the frame is blue. So this is a blue illusion, right? It will work. How did they get? How did they even make that? That is a blue illusion right here, right? Uh, creates a XX. Yeah, it's a blue illusion. So yeah, Ugin will do this. Minus zero for the big brain play, and then um, minus zero. Yes, confirm zero, and then that gets rid of that. Beautiful. Nothing to eat to extinction, but we'll keep it for the instant, or we can eat some food. Let's 
So 10, we have 11 mana, and we have 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, like 12 or 13 mana. Now there is of course the possibility, I'm down to 16 cards in my hand at the moment. So there is that possibility. Now Magecraft does force you to draw, and then we get, okay, we get a Planeswalker. Instant and Sorcerer spells cost one less, deals one damage to each opponent, whatever, fine. So we've got an answer for that. Just you wait. You haven't even witnessed my greatest feat yet. I was listening to the Good Luck High Five podcast, and they were talking in there that apparently the um, the voice of Will is the actor from um, Lord of the Rings, Pippin. Did any of you know that? The College Cup is not going so well. I've played three games so far, maybe four. I've lost all of them. And then on this one, oh, we, get, we got Counterspelled. So we're totally getting defeated. So Deadly Alliance should let me get rid of that. We have three untapped mana. So now they break out the counter spells. Okay, there's Trust blood on me. the snow. We will fight again. Yeah, down to 13 cards, and I don't really know. I think I have too many ways to, to finish the game. All my planeswalkers are getting killed. Ugin would help me finish the game, but it's dead. Professor Onyx is dead. Liliana. Liliana would have... I mean, Waker of the Dead would have been nice. I guess I have maybe one more Planeswalker, and I don't really think she's very, very, very helpful to help me win the game. It's 13 cards. Okay, let's do this. Let's whittle down their hand a little bit more. Guide Lantern. We have one card left in hand. down to six <laughs> now again I, I made another mistake here this is how I'm going to oh, well I guess now they won um, I, once again wow red player winning as always right um, that's the thing that I keep forgetting about this deck is that this is how I can get my planeswalkers out of the graveyard blood on the snow paying snow mana and then I can bring the thing back uh, bring the thing back from the graveyard but I keep forgetting to update that so one life left. Obviously, they're just going to have a simple shock, so let's go on. So I've lost all of these games, right, with just, like, direct damage from a red player, pretty much. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that the most creative deck building of all time? All right, let's go over here to that deck. And before I forget, put the snow mana, because that's how I can bring back my Planeswalkers from the graveyard. We really need to put a Cranial Archive into Standard. I guess it's way too powerful to give every color that recursive ability. That'd be really good if, if you don't know what the cranial archive is I'll load it up in the web browser just a moment oh, look at there's a bug going on um, oh wait, let's see can I bring it back no there it is there's a bug at the moment do you see that um, the border of that very first card is getting messed up see how it's just like a weird gray if I hover over it it goes to normal but see how these, these say the, 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 the artist's names at the bottom. 
but that first one is is messed up and it's just gray until you hover over it. Hopefully it doesn't crash. Let's try, what is this game, four or five? It's singleton, so the strategies here. Strategies of Singleton. Now, do I want the card draw off of that or another red player? Or that's kind of a very, very common thing that we've been seeing, isn't it? People are playing a lot of red in this, I guess, because of the instants and sorceries. So I'm pretty sure they're going to have a Brazen Borrower here. Or a counter spell. Tomod's Crypt. Alright, so while the opponent contemplates, uh, here's another question of the day. Let's see, May... We already did May 15th, but we'll go to May 14th. <laughs> what makes a good enemy? That is the philosophical question in the book of questions. What makes a good enemy? I'm not exactly sure what I wrote in my answer when I when I did respond to this, but um, the half the answer that I wrote here I can't I can't read my first word, but the second word says redhead. I don't know what I'm trying to say there. Ruin crab. Hopefully one more. Um, I think people are, are making... I, I'm, I have a deck that's not exactly uh, optimized for this format, I guess. Uh, it, it's not relying a lot on Magecraft, so I guess that's why I'm not doing so well. And everyone else is trying very hard to do Magecraft, so not able to compete very well. So probably just gonna skip the event. Don't really want to make... I don't want to try too hard for a Magecraft optimized deck.
Okay, so it's pausing on the opponent with double black. They either have removal for a creature, or the forbidden. some interesting trinket on my desk which I'm sure it'll end up on the floor there it is. there it went actually this cat is definitely one of those cats that loves to knock things over they have the negative they have the negative mage craft ability If you craft the deck around it, it's not that hard. But I'm, I'm repurposing a deck that wasn't Magecraft focused, that's why maybe it's not quite working out. Anyway, the opponent's name, what is this? Kiri... Kiri... Not Kitty, but Kitty, Ki, K I R I. They're gonna village rights their own thing, of course. Um, Kitty, no, ma, Alright, six mana. Professor Onyx. So I've got an answer. Come on, there's got to be something useful. from Planeswalkers, sure. <laughs> I have my own Onyx, but then I Mana Flood. Okay, so let's... I mean Mana Screwed. So let's... Um, get rid of that. Yeah, all that noise that you're hearing is that the this cat loves to knock stuff off tables. I haven't really had, in memory, too many cats that love to knock stuff off tables. I, I thought that was always just a, kind of a, um, like a stereotypical fun concept of a cat. But uh, mine, this one, is that kind of cat that he loves to knock stuff off the table. Four, five, six, so I can bring out my own Professor Onyx here. Although they are at eight. I think it'll be better to... Oh, I should have played the mana rock first. But let's see what they go. So there there we go. There's that... Um, there's that murderous rider that would have gotten rid of my onyx. What we can still do is this. And then out of this, draw... So they have creature removal, creature removal, creature removal. They're looking at the graveyard. Great, and I don't have my crypt or anything like that. Alright, blood on the snow. Finally with all my snow mana. Scorpion, sure. This is gonna... Let's do the Liliana squad. Used to have a cat named Marmite, who liked to hide and attack you as you walk through the house. 
This one does as well. Ruining your day is going to feel great. Likes to hide and jump out of the shadows and all that fun stuff. Let's mage craft here. So next turn, if all goes well, I'll have the third Liliana. I think there's four in this deck. Yep, still passing because they've got all their creature removal. Oops, that actually goes up to eight. I, I made it, look at that, I made it to the eighth replicating ring. So I've got a million mana. All right, well, let's bring out another. And then to really shock them, I'll bring out my my next Planeswalker. Twenty four cards in hand. We're doing things my way. Nothing to return. Maybe they do have a Planeswalker removal spell, and they're waiting for. Liliana to get to the ultimate. Next turn, I can ultimate her. But if I do go to plus one right now and she's at eight, probably it'll cause the opponent, let me remove that Planeswalker, hopefully. And then I've got Ugin, so we'll have, we'll have that. What are they looking They're looking at the graveyard, like, what is in your graveyard? I don't see any creatures in your graveyard. Oh, there we go. Exile eight things from my, ex exile my whole graveyard. Fine. My whole graveyard is done, and then let's um, get her to eight, and then scare the people, scare the opponent, and then let's finish scaring them with one more Planeswalker. And then let's memory leak them. Ooh, Call of the Death Dollar, we don't need that. One, two mana, and then draw one more card from that egg. And then a zero cost Tormod's Crypt, and let's get rid of their graveyard anyway. Fine. There we go. So one way that this deck also wins is to crush the opponent's soul. Um, by having so many planeswalkers. Bad deal w might be a bad deal simply because. Ooh, Massacre Worm. Okay. Fine. How about we do this? Okay, this will be this will be hilarious. This is they they've lost, unfortunately. Can you see the solution? They've already lost. Watch this. Thank you. Here is the here is how they've lost. A bad deal to have them discard two cards from their hand. Oh look, it's the only two cards in their hand. Then I ultimate Liliana and deal twenty one damage. I will teach you the true meaning of hopelessness. Alright, there's the first win out of the five times or whatever that I've played, and I'm very surprised that this deck hasn't been able to handle that. Although, pretty much all of the wins that, I, all of the losses that I was experiencing were with apparently is it decks, or mono-red decks, because those mono-red decks have a lot of instants and sorceries, which is doing the direct damage and drawing them cards. So it's giving that red, uh, red player a lot of card draw. See, that's why they don't they don't like that's why Wizards doesn't like to make a lot of card draw spells in red because they already have the direct damage that will just squeak out a win out of nowhere. And then obviously with a in is it aka Prismari deck, you've got the direct damage of red plus the card draw of blue, very strong. Uh, 
I'm playing this player that is mono black that was trying to deal more with like, okay, instants and sorceries, I'll kill your creatures. Well, I have no creatures. So just the algorithm put me up against someone that my creatureless deck really incapacitated them. Whereas all of the other losses were because they were focused on mage crafting. And here, here's my board state. So I've got how much mana? I've got, uh, I've got ten. I've got ten lands plus eight rings plus two more mana rocks. All I need is a huge X spell to do something, but there's no X spells in black in standard. And yeah. Planeswalker squad, and then Liliana took one for the. I mean, Professor Onyx took one for the team here. For um, let's look at that. Minus eight. Each opponent may discard a card. If they don't, they lose three life. Repeat this procedure six more times. So basically, seven times three, 21. They were under 21 damage. So that was 21 damage, negative 10. So I saw that when it was about to turn to my turn, they had two cards left in hand. And then I did the bad deal, which was discard two cards. No cards in hand, it was a forced 21 damage, and there it is. All right, well, finally one win. Let's take a break, and then we can uh, maybe change to draft, because I, I, I'm not quite thinking I'm going to go that far with this in this event unless I craft my deck, and I don't even care about these rewards, really. The art is cool. It's pretty cool cultivate, but don't really want the rest. So let's take a break. I'll do the next snack chat and uh, game code giveaway. And uh, then we'll draft. So be back in a bit.
All right, we're back. So let's move on to the next topics. Um, another game code giveaway, snack chat, and then to the draft. Now before that, let me reach right over here and show this item in the background. This is, uh, I won't take it out, but uh, this is very reflective, but this is the, um, first issue of uh, the brand new Magic comic book. Did you all know there's a new Magic comic book? It's being published by Boom Studios, creative team of McKay, what's his name? Jed McKay, I believe, uh, Ig Guada, and Consini. This is issue number one. So this is the hidden Planeswalker variant. It, it came in a bag and it was covered by uh, by the this Planeswalker logo, and you could not tell which cover it was until you opened it. And so, when you open it, then it's this. So it's the it's this original Liliana art. Uh, there's a lot of reflection just because it's in this protective holder. But there's Liliana. There's a bunch of skulls down there. This is one of the hidden Planeswalker variants. There were three of them. So I, I managed to get the Liliana one. Uh, take a brief look at the other ones. Thank you. If we go over to the web browser, we can go look at what the other ones are. Before I show them, can anyone guess what are the others? There were three Planeswalkers. So Liliana was one of them, as we can see right here. Can anyone guess what the other two were? They were all, uh, they, they were hidden until you opened it. And uh, it was one of these three possible ones. Thank you. Now, the, the title of the comic is simply Magic, which is very weird that they didn't give it a more meaningful name. Like Magic, the new adventures, or, you know, some sort of subtitle. It's just called Magic because then it makes it hard to find in, in the world of comics. So right here it is right here. So the other possibilities are right here. There's um, there's the regular cover right here on the left. There's the Liliana cover. Sorin and Kaya. Then there's blank sketch purple, so that someone can draw a cool sketch on it. There's also the Mirka and Dolfo cover, which I thought I ordered from my comic shop, but didn't get it for some weird reason. And there's also some other ones listed here, which I don't know what they look like, but there's also the Iguata character design cover, there's a Jungin Yun cover, an Inhug Lee cover, a Mateo Scalera cover, a Kim Jacinto cover, second printing. I did order the second printing, let's see if I get it. But anyway, here's the brand new uh, magic series. If people want more magic, more stories, it's a brand new series out there. Uh, I have that on the background there for today. So there she is protecting me. All right, let's do a um, let's do the other uh, code giveaway. People are interested in the code. One more code. I am going to open up the um, I am going to open up the contest screen again. So I'm going to open up the contest screen again, put in another challenge question right here. And if you want to get this code, get to get one more code, um, 
first three people uh, you can uh, enter right here so all right so I'm gonna put the question in there Go over here and I'm going to activate the reply capability right here save so here's the question for for a code which sorcery is your favorite in magic so even if you're not going to enter uh just tell me there in the in the discord or here in the chat what is your favorite sorcery in in all of the world of magic oh earlier i remember i asked the question but i didn't acknowledge it but people had answered it uh, about the least favorite and then I think you know Stevie you were saying I, I I've played this long but I don't have I don't have an unfavorite one and then I think someone else said something else um, yeah, here you, you had said I uh, played for three years you don't think you've ever think of coming across your least favorite card and then oh yeah scute swarm so that was an answer I also hate scute swarm uh, if I if I'm not playing a deck that can deal with all of those scutes. As a matter of fact, the other day I was playing against someone that uh, that had two anointed processions, which doubles counters or tokens. I mean, so they had they had two of those, and they had a Cathar's Crusade, which gives a plus one counter to all your creatures when a new creature enters the battlefield. And so we got to the point where they had. They had played the land to copy their scutes and it was copying and copying and copying and it was slowing down the game and after a while I started to record it and it and, it's, and it was recording for 30 minutes and I lost the game not because they attacked me with a million scutes because they crashed arena but I lost the game um, it would it was working so slow i couldn't even touch anything and then the screen said take another action or the game will result in a draw so it was saying a draw was coming and it was not even my turn it was their turn and they were doubling and doubling and tripling and quadrupling their skewed swarm and it kept slowing down the game more and more and more and i was recording it for 30 minutes and then eventually when their final loop of whatever happened and it came back to my turn, supposedly, I don't even know what, I suddenly lost the game. So I sent a um, bug report over to Wizards, but unfortunately I have to think that that will just, uh, no one will ever uh, will ever see that, but let's see if they do. So yep, Skewed Swarm. Yeah, I would have taken that free draw exactly, but it just never even gave me a chance. Uh, at some point, it just suddenly said, "No, you lost," and that's it. So there wasn't even any, any um, recourse. All right, so people can answer that. And the next thing before the draft is um, the next snack chat item. So here's another snack chat item. Japanese style red bean mochi. So I've never had this before. This is an authentic Japanese snack. Red bean mochi. I assume it is sweet. Uh, there are a few things in English, I guess. Name red bean mochi. Weight, etc. Ingredients maltose, which is a type of sugar red bean paste which also has more sugar and soybean oil glutinous rice powder more sugar what is that potato powder water artificial flavor preservative specifically potassium sorbate well in japan they just tell you straight up preservatives in the u.s they hide it behind a bunch of weird names uh, glycerin fatty acid ester, which is E471, and xanthan gum contain soybeans. Yep, so it does look pretty tasty. Never, never look at the ingredients of things. But let's open this up and have some. 
Is any of this readable to me? Uh, Izuki, Azuki, something about Azuki. Oh yeah, uh, red beans. We we call them red beans in English, but they're also known as Azuki beans in Japanese. So let's open that up. Side is ornate. I see it's got a, a packet of uh, uh, spices down here to sprinkle all over your, your food. Oops. sugar on my plate mat, but I guess it's better than the floor. Now, on the package, they, they look round and fluffy, and here they look a little bit squashed. And we'll switch over to the other cam over here. Smells sweet. Do they come in an extra little container? Uh, touching the top a little bit, it, it feels very, it almost feels like ge gelatinous. Feels very soft. It's a bit like, it feels, the texture feels like I'm eating raw dough. It's obviously not raw, but it feels like that. Vaguely... Vaguely like gelatin. A lot of sweet flavors. The adzuki beans. The red beans. I I got like a slight flash of like regular beans that I've had throughout my life. You know, the beans that you might get out of a taco or burrito, that is, but with more sweet flavor. It's pretty fun, pretty fun snack. These don't look exactly like the package. Look how cute those look. And look how look how filled they are with the red bean inside. This one I forgot to show it when I bit it. It was not that stuffed. Um And the the texture is definitely Like I'm saying this texture is definitely gelatinous. Glutinous. It's a fun texture. It's very sweet. Like I wouldn't really see myself eating too many of these. Very sweet. And then the filling. It's another sort of like sweet filling, but I do get a bit of the vague flavor of a basic bean like from a burrito. So I'll have half of one more. I'll show you the inside and then we'll get back to the gameplay. But this is the snack chat. This, this is cool. I'll give it a um, 4.25 out of 5. It's a nice taste. It's a fun snack that, you know, you can play with it. That's the inside part of it. It's not overflowing. Well, I guess if you kind of squeeze it like this, it's not overflowing. Like the package, but you know, truth and advertising is never there. Pretty fun.
back to the game play. <laughs> that was pretty interesting. This would be fun to put, like if there was a get-together with friends. Have that. Have that as one of the things to try. Finger foods. All right, I'm gonna go with the draft. I wonder if they have any chocolate or vanilla flavor ones. Yeah, I would. I would definitely try those. Those sound like good. Those sound like good, um, good flavors. So that mochi treat was from that um, world market that I've mentioned before. It's also the place where I got that German cola. So, all right. So for the moment, need to hear, need to look here a little bit more than in the chat and such, but. There's a lot of good things in this pack. Um, It's very early, but I've gotten a couple of Witherbloom cards here. It's black and green, so that means I need to be on the lookout. There's some a little bit of life gain strategy happening. And then in black, I could also destroy things. Okay, let me grab that. Destroy creature card. Let's see who else is on the table. We've got Gallego Ray, Kazemaru, Hooch, Golden Lining, Supreme Black, Niko GK, and Singamore Wicket. Two Teferis, he called himself uh, Quintorius, Zimone, um, Suddenly forgot her name. Um, how can we forget the name of one of the most famous screen planeswalkers? Um, Nissa, that's it. Nissa. Ajani and Fibblethip. So that's, and then of course Vivian. So that's who we've got on the table. I don't recognize any famous streamer names or anything, but you never know.
anywhere yet on school resuming in person. Um, I believe for the fall, which begins in August, there are some classes starting again in person with reduced capacity and things are changing all of the time because as more people are um, doing the vaccination and such it's a changing situation but the college seems to be moving towards that in terms of by the fall in August some car some um some in-person classes will be resuming You're halfway done with your computer science degree, very good. So then if you're halfway through it, not too much further to go before it um, it's complete, right? And you have that under your belt. So I was on campus one or two weeks ago. I went to my office on campus and it was all very, very, well, it was also the weekend. Uh, it was all very quiet and um, they still had the very last sign that we put on the door, which was about lab time. They still had that. They still had that on the door, so I thought that was interesting. How time stood still. There was a it was there was a great cartoon uh, that I saw, uh, a little drawing of a comic strip of a person returning to their office for the first time in a while and and um, just having the nostalgia that the very last item on their calendar that they marked because they had a wall calendar the last item on the wall calendar was the last day that they were at their office at work and then they were getting uh you know pangs of uh, of uh, memory and such and they looked in their drawer and there was a shriveled up banana that they hadn't gotten out of their drawer since the pandemic started a year ago but don't worry everyone it was just a cartoon Can't wait till our play group can get back together again with Angie and Ben and everyone and play magic. Exactly. It's been a while. Way, way too long. What you need to also do is um, prep your. Um, Up your decks look through the decks again and remember remember your strategies and such my decks are over there on the corner and I haven't really used them either in a while actually I don't know if I have it handy but I have a uh, I had a photo here that was one of the last times that we played in person Let me see if I can find that easily, because um, I love on my app that it auto uploads to I like that it auto uploads to my um, to my computer. So I'm looking in 2020 at the beginning. Oh, everyone's leaving all these green cards, which is good, right? Yeah, 
yeah, pests are coming along here in these colors. So it looks like people are leaving me a lot of green, which is good. this photo well, I've got my photo How can I, what's the best way to show this um, and on the web browser I can drop a photo in here this is the photo when we went to the Theros sneak peek right here it's only gonna show it halfway because I've got on the other side the um, but that's when that's the last time I went to a, uh, a pre-release in person with Theros. Oops. I should just uh, yeah. Let me pass it back. Let me see what else do I have here. Okay, this was my. This was my. These were my Theros poles. Oops, let me bring it back to the game. Emergent sequence. Well, let me get a land and make a creature. Stick skin veil. X proof. We got that flyer. Desert's Gambit. Actually, that is free. That is free to play because that costs Phyrexian mana, so I could play that. Three plus two life. Draw two cards. Proliferate. So, might grab that. Alright, here is the. Here's the here's the Theros cards. I guess I can't really zoom in that great. But my life gain payoff. There's a life gain enabler. So we've got some pests, we've got some life gain. Here's a fun photo. Um, this is me at, at the January 2020 welcome tables at the campus, and there I am welcoming the uh, students to the campus. And, but I had an ulterior motive. I wanted to find more students to join the card club. So then I had these. Uh, I had these cards there to catch people's attention to have them join. So I had all of the cards types there. Magic, Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon. Uh, what's this one called again? Card Fight Vanguard, I think. There's a Meowth just hanging out. Act tough. If this Pokemon has any something energy attached to it, this attack does 20 more damage. The doors around objects. It wanders the streets on a nightly basis. They, they still keep using that that flavor text from for that card from like 1995, right? Okay, what are we doing here? Okay, another Dyna. Okay, Force of Will. Yeah. All 
All right, so I got one of those Rise of Extus to remove stuff. Let's see, can I find the photo? I think we took a photo, it was in maybe February, the, the last game that we played. Oh, here's one. Okay, here's one. Let's see if we let's see if we can if people can recognize themselves right here. I'll put it up one moment. Check out this photo right here. This is dated uh, February tenth, twenty twenty. The good old days, right here. So there's a. Uh, There's me, there's Geo, and there's Stevie's Mysterious World right over there. <laughs> okay, back to the game here. Uh, trample Life Link, sure. February 10th is your birthday? Ah, okay. So, on the other side of the world. On the other side of the world, there was, um, we were having a game right there, and it was exactly at 1731 hours, which is uh, 530, so after class. As you can see here, I have my magic sleeves, I had counters on stuff. Was that my, was that my cat deck? And Stevie over here. There, look at that. I can tell from it upside down right there. I can, right, right above my picture here, I can tell that that is the uh, departed deckhand. And then Geo had his red, had his red playmat to play his red deck. And then we were teaching, I forgot her name, but we were teaching her magic. And then that's me right there. So, yep, that was in 2020. Oops, I don't want that. I want that. This is barely packed too. I think I'm getting a lot of stuff that I like. All right, third pack. What are we doing in third? Okay, how about an 1110 creature for four mana? This assumes I've got other things to sacrifice, like um, pests and such. There's a lot of cool cards in here. Mortality Spear. There's a lot of things that I like here. That Titan. Even the Mage Hunter. Umbral Juke. Mortality Spear. Let's go with this big scary 1110, assuming I've got creature to sacrifice. Yep, you know it. He's got the he's got the um, Hmm. I could natural order and go get directly that huge creature. Get the sacrifice a green creature first. Well, I probably will have pests. Not valid in in any format, but in draft, yes. Sword deck in Commander. Uh, 
I'll load up some I'll load up some more fun Creatures I have so far, 15, okay. I'll load up some more, um, fun photos in a moment. Yeah, people left me a lot of the... People left me a lot of the cards, the colors that I want. Green and black. Alright, what other... What other... Oh, there we go, that Mage Hunter. photo can I find? Oh, I'll show this one. This is my old kitty. Never, never quite realized how chubby he actually got. But looking back on his older photos, it is quite obvious. And, um... That was at the beginning of the year. That's how he was. So I think I got a lot of interesting cards to put together here. Um, all right, so a lot of a lot of cards. Um, I'm gonna switch over the. Sleeves. Nineteen creatures, twenty one non creatures. I think I got a good amount of stuff with pests and life gain. Perfect dream here. Tend the tend the pests. If I if I can't use my my huge demigoth titan, I could pay two to sacrifice it, and it would make me um, it would make me eleven pests. That's magical Christmas land right there. If I can't use my big old um, scary creature, I can sacrifice it to make little creatures.
Man, I'm at 49 cards. What can I cut? Well, I guess I'm not really gonna... I don't know, do I want to draw so many cards with Tezzeret's Gambit? Plus it proliferates, that's why it's a rare card. Let's see, eliminate will destroy a small creature. Essence Infusion will give a counter and a lifelink. Sorcery Speed. Reach Fanatic is a lifelinker. Biograph is a 5 4. Emergent Sequence gets me a mana and makes a creature. Reckless Amplomancer, once I've got a lot of mana, this creature can get very big. Once I've got 8 mana, so it says double the power and toughness. So it starts off, hey there, Top Hat, how you doing? Um, what am I proliferating? Um, there's a little bit of plus one counters here and there, but not so much that maybe the proliferate is that important. Um... Well, I do have a life, a bit of life gain strategy in here too, so also the Phyrexian mana isn't, you know, three mana to draw two cards and proliferate, pay the two life, but I've got life gain, so light not be that overcosted, but yeah, it's not really a big counters deck, so maybe, maybe that'll be a cut. Uh, okay, Stevie, uh, thanks for coming to hang out then. Um, I'll check out your streams as well, so it was cool that you came to hang out, and... We'll see you on the net on the next stream. All right, Tangle Trap. Well, this is I, I'm not since this is best of one. I don't. This would obviously be a great sideboard card, but this would also destroy artifacts. Uh, not a ton of counters. Plus, you go down to color. Seems right. Uh, not a ton of counters. Plus, you go down a color. Uh, okay, so the Tangle Trap. If there's a troublesome flyer, that'll definitely get rid of it, probably. Or if there's an artifact, this is more for the flyer, but again, because it's only best of one. Let's see. Gain some life for the life gain synergies. Go learn into the sideboard. Uh, not a wait, no, you, you don't learn, you, you lessen. There we go. What do I have in lessons? The only lesson that I really have is the prophecy. Draw two, then. Scry to then draw, so that's not too impressive, but... Deadly Brew, do the Sacrifice, return a permanent. Dina, gain life, they lose life. Sacrifice a creature, she gets a plus X. Infuse, give a creature death touch, return it to the battlefield, gain two life. Tend the pest, sacrifice something, make pests. They play apprentice. When you mage craft, they lose life. I gain life. Honor troll. If I've got a lot of life, it gets plus two, plus one, and it doubles my life when I gain life. Mage duel. A little bit of removal there. Spine Karak, Kind of a simple creature, so would possibly cut that one. It's just a plain old two four. Although it does have a good blockitude. To forget learn is also loot. Oh yeah, you can also loot. Yeah, good point. I was just looking to see what else I have as lessons in my sideboard if I was going to learn into them. But there's also loot if you don't have a valid target. So Spine Karak might be a cut because it's just a 2-4, although it could be a blocker. Um, double researchers are right here. When you gain life, gets bigger with counters. That's what you proliferate. Then we got the pest summoning, make some pests, Tizard's Gambit, draw proliferate, Mage Hunter, that's like the negative mage craft. Removal. Natural order. I guess I'll remove natural order. I don't really need to sneak attack in something so amazing. Uh, the gambit and the vanilla creature is an easy cut. Yeah, I think the vanilla creature is just so basic, right? And then let's cut a few things just to to try about the the um, uh, 
cutting down to 40. All right, so, uh, yeah, not natural order. Don't really need to sneak the, the Dema Goth Titan. Could be a quick way to definitely get it onto the board if I sacrifice a pest. Then, of course, it does have the upkeep of attacking or blocking. Karak is a 3 3 lifelink trampler. Introduction to Annihilation, just in case I really need to get rid of stuff. You know what? I could actually put this back into the sideboard and then I could learn into it instead of putting it as a as a card right in the main deck. Although I only really have the one is it do I only have the one learn card? The cat is destroying something. Um That's pretty, that's pretty much every consensus, right? That all lessons should just automatically be in the sideboard, right? Because you'll be able to learn into them. What does my land look like? 17, 881. Got the bookworm, everyone loves that one. Three life draw card keeps coming back over and over. Do I have too much removal? I've got two ecstasies. Well, that's got another one of the learns in there, actually. So the Karak, Titan, Natural Order. Yeah, probably not Natural Order. No more removal, Hunter, Pests. Dual, Troll. And the Pests. Yeah, I think... I don't, I don't think the 10 the pest is going to do exactly what I want. Um, the idea would be that if I have to sacrifice the Devagoth, it would give me so many pests, but that's not going to happen, right? So let's remove that. Where did it go? Uh, 10 the pests. Game life, do death touch tricks, and then bring it back. Tend the pest plus in the Garth and Stadium is alright. Well, yeah, if, if I exactly if it all works out, I don't have the stadium, but <laughs> yeah, tend the pests, make eleven pests, have the stadium out, they lose. Have you been able to get that to happen, or have you seen it or theory crafted it? So besides magic, how are you doing? Are you are you at work? Taking a break from work? I know you work the night shift at a uh, big store out there. So how are you doing, Top Hat? Um, do I want that tangle? Oh, Saffron did a, a video on it. Got it to work live, huh? Okay, I'm at 42 cards. So let's look at one more time. Eliminate, Leech Fanatic, Life Game, Biograph, it's a 5-4. Sequence, you ramp, Amplomancer gets big with more mana. I'm not exactly doing a lot of mana acceleration, although this format seems to be slow enough to do stuff. You went to work, but had an accident, it got a little hurt. What? Well, the hook is not so bad that, um, that it's bad. I know that companies sometimes are cautious and if they're good companies. They, they have people go home if they get hurt, so hopefully not, not too bad. Hey, okay, let's see. Not too, too bad. Okay, very good. Well, possibly the Amplomancer is a cut because that requires a lot of mana to, to get up and going. And then possibly the Tangle Trap, because that assumes a flyer. Well, I'm sure there's going to be flyers. But, um...
Oh, you redeemed the stretch. Okay, I should stretch. Let's do that right now. Thank you for the redemption of the thing. I need to stretch. I didn't put a time limit of how long I need to stretch, but I guess I'll stretch right now. Because yes, I have been on the I have been on the stream for a moment. And thank you for the redemption there. And now that's the stretch. I forgot what I named these things anyway, but um yep, let's do a little stretch. Now what you missed earlier is I was trying out these, um, I had a snack chat earlier and I had some of these red bean, red bean mochi, red bean mochi treats from Japan. Posture check. Okay, checking my posture as well. I stand over here, maybe I'll be better on camera, kind of, right here. So let's check my posture when I sit down again. Stretch and then posture. Thanks for redeeming the VMC points. <laughs> All right, so final two, final two cuts. What do we think about that? The repli reckless amplomancer and the tangle trap. Although obviously I'm going to regret it once they have a flyer, and then they um. And then I can't deal with it, right? Now I've got plenty of the other removal elsewhere down here. I've got the Rise of Extus, and then I've got the Mage Hunter's Onslaught, and I've got the Mage Duel. Yeah, let's do that. So we'll go with the Amplomancer and the Tangle Trap. Here we go, 40 cards. So we've got removals, life gain stuff, creatures, learn. Got some life gain stuff with Dina. Plus life gain stuff with other things. Let's give that version one of the deck. Tangle trap is fine. Mana sinks are okay when they have the mana, but it's not looking good. Yeah, I don't. I'm not really. I'm not really um, ramping. The only thing is that one. That one green card that gets a land and makes it into a creature. Not really ramping. Besides that, and. Uh, I just look. I just noticed the artwork over here with this Wither Bloom student, with all of these cute creatures all over the place, except that one in the corner there that's uh, about to eat everyone. All right, so let's play version one. See what we need to change if we need to change. As we get our opponent, the last. Here's one more photo from last year. This photo here. This is the photo I took of my of my TV on the last episode of Star Trek Deep Space Nine because I do a rewatch of the whole series every every once in a while, and the last time that I finished my series walk walk through or full binge that is was February twenty eighth, twenty twenty. So the last episode of Deep Space Nine, my favorite Star Trek series of all. The last time that I finished watching it was a year ago, and it's high time for another. Rewatch of that. Oh, okay, cool. You answered that. Cool. Uh, you earned a. Game code. Courtesy of Wizards of the Coast. Check that in a moment. Okay, so we're playing Prismari. Whims of fate. All permanents in one pile. Alright, so we got the looks like we're going with triple colors over here, so I could No, I haven't played that card. Um, are we getting an answer from uh, Mason over here? Demonic Tutor. <laughs> that is a very, very good answer. Um, okay, there we go. We got Dina. Uh, they cultivated into big stuff. So. Four 
mana, four mana. What I could do here is I could Deadly Brew. Uh, if you sacrifice a permanent this way, you may return another permanent from your grave. I don't really have any other permanents, so that might not be a great trade. Um, that's a fight spell, but they've got a death touch. That's annoying. You've been watching Seven Deadly Sins with your son. It's in a string anime. Seven Deadly Sins. What? What is that one? If I do a bio now, what do we want to do here? Can't really mage. And then Dina. We'll bring Dina out. Seven Deadly Sins anime. Um, tell me a little bit about it. Sounds familiar. Refuge cannot be blocked. Okay, Worm, Whole Serpent. I am not sure that. Get my Rise of Ecstasy any minute. <laughs> Alright, well, we could bring out the Demogoth. Although I would feel better if we had. more things to sacrifice. All right, so if I... That's a plus one and a fight. One, two, three, four, five mana in total. Yeah, let's just bring out this Groff. Let me look up that... Um, that uh, whims of fate. It sounds. Oops, we got Zimone on your side. Oh, it's uh, it's each of the um, main students, right? I've got I've got the uh, Witherbloom school. Plus, I've also got the Witherbloom. Um, plus, I've got the Witherbloom. Uh, student, and then they have the. Hold on, let me pay them back. They're just gonna hold up that blocker. Um... Well, we'll see what they do here. All those chaos spells. That's what we want. All those chaos spells like Whims of Fate, Warp World, Thieves Auction, etc. I got actually a Warp World. Um, I got a Warp World Mystical Archive from a, uh, a real Strixhaven booster that I opened. So that was really cool. The art on that mystical booster stuff is so good. Top hat, if you want that, uh, so the point of the questions in the in the Discord there is that you would people would get a um, booster pack. I mean, a, a game code, courtesy of Wizards of the Coast. So if you want to put your answer into the Discord to just mark it that you answered, uh, that would be good. And then you could, um, you'll, you'll get a... You'll get that booster code. Yeah, Warp World is in is in Mystical Archive. Okay, there we go. They got the Amplomancer. And they're doing unblockability to itself. Fine. So we're on a clock here, but uh, they'll just keep making something unblockable, but the whole point of Dina is that she's got 
triple block. That's exactly what I want. Uh, four in total. Yeah, that'll work. All right, so they're just top decking. Okay, so they can do some unblockability stuff, but then, oh man, look at that. Look at that. Look at what they top decked. Well, I have removal for that, so it all is not lost. I have removal. Come on, we've got all of our removal. Uh, huh, are you sure about that? Okay, well, sure, because if I gain life off of that, they lose life. And I could... Okay, so I'm, I'm going to risk it for the biscuit right here in terms of um, one of my many removal spells. I'm sure I will top deck and get rid of that 22-22. Put a counter on something that's already got a counter. Okay, fine. That's not my removal, but... Um, I guess I might as well take this out. Alright, come on, removal! There's plenty of you in the deck. Okay, top decking, that's fine. Scrying. Yeah, I have an answer for it. I just need to get it. Um, I don't want to block with that because then I've got to sacrifice something just to block with it, so... Sorry, little leech fanatic. If I sacrifice that, she gets plus until end of turn. Uh, sacrifice the creature until end of turn. Yeah, that, doesn't, that won't even do anything. Good thing there's no trample. Right, that's not exactly what I need, but... I could attack with the Demogoth, and even if, and then they won't block, but then I'll only have one. So if I attack with the Demogoth, and even if they let it through, they're still alive, then they have two attackers, so obviously I blocked the 22. And then only two gets through. Or I could, or I could wait for something good to top deck. Yeah, let's keep it safe and um, just wait for something to top deck. Hopefully, they don't top deck another another fractal. Oh, they're about to tap down my Demogoth, I guess. Yeah, not so bad. Putting another counter on their 2-2. Two -two. No, they rather scry, okay. I could sacrifice my Demogoth. See, this is where that pest Ten the pests would have been great, because then I would have um, made so many pests. There's the pests. Um, at least there'll be more blockers. I guess, I guess more blockers just to hold off. Draw a card for each different power among creatures you control. So you're going to draw like three cards, right? Two. Okay. Flying and ward. There's just more problems to to deal with. <laughs> All right, well, 
we'll keep that in hand just to make them think I've got something. Um, it's going to be seven in the air. And as I was saying about the the air creatures, that's where my not plummet, but whatever it was called, would have come in handy. Now obviously when I put it back into the deck, then I'll run into players that don't have flyers. Because of the algorithm. So I have left here 20 cars. They've got 15. We're on a 15 turn clock, everyone. Is that instant? Uh, tap it. I uh, can't, can't activate as a sorcery and only, only if you've cast an instant or sorcery. Okay, fine. Uh, what are we doing here? Yeah, okay, so we're. I don't know if I should even be keeping this keep Demogoth around anymore. Is that life loss right there? Oh, I could block. Yeah, let's block with this Demogoth because then I can just eat it with Dinah and then trigger her thing and then trigger the Apprentice's thing. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Whatever you cast, no, that's not a trigger on that. Um, yeah, it's still that Magecraft stuff. Fine. Oh, but I have to separate. Uh, that was a misplay. a lot of card draw for the removal that never came. Let's go on to the next game here, and I got another question of the day. Let's see. What was the other question of the day? Here's the question, very philosophical. What are you exploring? So sometimes the questions are literal, sometimes they're figurative. This one is, what are you exploring? Turn one pupil guy? Oh, the other one. Uh, okay, so we got a lot of magecraft action that will happen here. playing Silver Quill, right? Nope, they're playing Low Hold. I could sacrifice my apprentice here, bring out a 5-4. That might be a little bit faster than they can handle it. If they mage craft, this will become a plus two. 
And that's a common. Oh, that's an uncommon. That's also got Magecraft. Alright, so... Let's see... I have not fully interacted with this background to see if there's any interactable things. Like the other backgrounds. And the one from Ikorio is one of my favorites because it, um, it's it got a lot of hidden things in it. Uh oh, so clearly they've got combat tricks here, so yep, not falling for it. the anti anti magecraft so whatever they cast magecraft stuff will happen and then anti magecraft okay they're gonna like plus three or plus two or whatever that first striker no they're gonna make it fly actually okay and they will loot there's the fly there's flying right there so I put back the fly the flying killer hmm but they still have another Combat trick. All right, there we go. Um, Or do I have enough? This two, if you've cast another instant. Nope, I haven't. Okay, do I have enough? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we've got enough, so we can do both. Single red mana. Do they have a lightning bolt? The mage duel. Let's get rid of their first striker. Just to be safe here, um, the cat unplug the monitor. Just to be safe here, um, yeah, let's put pressure. So the cat unplugged the monitor and then it moved all my stuff. Hopefully, nothing happened. As well, they're gonna finally do that instant and sorcery where my mage hunter will do stuff. I lose one life. of contemplation probably hold back block okay you're gonna just go with one that one doesn't do anything at all um, when it attacks when you magecraft it doesn't do anything I 
guess they're really, 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 really relying on me to... to block. Finally going to see the combat trick that they had all along. what's going on here. So they're gonna plus one. All right, they'll need to do another to take me out. The, their Luminaric, their Luminancer is not even blocking, so we don't care. That's mage crafting, but it doesn't do anything because they don't have, well, they have one spirit. Wait, uh, that's a spirit, okay. That's how they're gonna take it out, I guess. And then my horror does its thing, so... And they have one more instant, possibly, in their hand. Oh, that's, that's one damage to me. Okay, that's not so bad at all. I thought it was going to be the one final damage to the creature. Down to five... So 2-2 two, two first strike, no big deal. It dies and returns. Oh, it returns as a spirit, but I'm at 11 life. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's 7 total damage in total. They could have some final out of the blue thing that does the final 11 damage. So I finally will block because I don't want the final, out of nowhere, red damage. And while they contemplate, I'm making a note there to give the game codes yeah so definitely there is one final do as much damage as possible so I'm definitely blocking this guess I'll lose Dina yep they're gonna put all of that damage onto that flyer can't possibly do 11 damage here, right? I'm going to take three off of the table, so that's only one, two, three, four in total. There we go. Oh, fine. Okay, well, that's one. Took a little while for them to figure things out. here to the 100 gems of one pack thank you on that that deserves a a copyrighted exaltation complicane frank i keep going first which i like 
Okay, here we go. Leech Fanatic turn one. I mean, t first play, so that then I can Dinah. I don't know if I should even be keeping this Demogoth, or should I add that other card that I was saying about sacrificing it so I can make pests. Yeah, remind me to do that. When the game ends, as soon as the game ends, remind me to do that to put that other spell that synergizes with the Titan. So the leech will become a life linker. See, there's my removal. That's the first time I've seen that removal. <clears throat> so that'll become a life linker on my turn. I will attack with that. Dinah will do her thing. 2-2 two -two versus 2-2. Two -two. Fine, that'll probably trade. Hmm. Yeah, I actually would rather make this bigger. Let's see if they trade. If they don't trade, even better. Trade. Even better. There we go. That's big. Probably get rid of that right away. I think when you mage, and that's another good mage crafter. Um, what do I want to definitely get rid of? That's going to keep getting bigger. And that's going to keep getting bigger. Great. So let's see how much this mage crafty player, how many will they be able to pull off? should have kept my mana up because they'll probably make that into a flyer then I would have tangled rooted it I guess that's dead we got two of those in the library also two of those So all of the lessons start at, the, the lowest one is just three mana, right? Everything is three mana and up. Hmm, they didn't, they didn't get any, what did they do? They didn't learn anything? I missed it. They didn't learn anything? All right, so this time, I'll hold back some mana. I'll tap out with that. Great. Part A. So, I'm missing land drops, and I definitely need to get to that Rise of Exodus, so...
that like sloth. Yeah, it's a pretty cute sloth. I could double block. Yeah, I should probably double block that. Nah, they're gonna have a bunch of combat tricks, right? They have full open mana. They're they're clearly building a good lore hold magecraft deck, so they'll probably have Yeah, they're gonna have combat tricks. Let's see how it's pausing. I'm gonna play their sloth. So before, I'm still not getting my mana, but we're just gonna sacrifice their. Uh, what can I return, actually? Well, um. Sacrifice their zero one. Yep, there it is. And then I can return my enemies are that great to return. I guess the best one actually is the researcher, because then as I gain some life. Four, five, six, seven, eight. That's eight mana in total. That's eight damage in total, and they're gonna be full of combat tricks. So I guess this is game over. Alright, GG. Two wins so far. Hey Gabe, how's it going? Um, could be better on the draft. Two wins. Two wins so far. Not really feeling that I'm getting a lot of my removal. And I'm at 41 cards. Never have been getting this honor troll to do its thing. Alright, let's go with this. How are you doing, Gabe? Contest is still open on the Discord in the contest section. There's one more person if you're able to answer the, the last question right there. You can get a um, game code. A <laughs> few nightcaps, huh? Yeah, go over to the go over to the Discord, to my Discord, go into the contests, answer that. The last question that I put there that says start. Put that in there, and then um, you win a game code, courtesy of Wizards of the Coast. Yeah, at least one lucky thing that I've been happening that's been happening here is that I've been going first every time, so I like that. I guess I should have put the apprentice out, and then I could mage craft. I can mage duel right here. Yeah, see, everyone's playing magecraft. Actually, wait. Uh, I should possibly wait for that later. This will do the same thing. Yep. There's only 
almost too cruel. Where's my life gaining this creature strategy when I need it? Oops, it's pausing for that, huh? Okay. Uh, that's a sorcery. Let's uh we'll mage craft that. If they remove it, that's fine. Thusly still does its thing. 31 life. I just learned to play the board game Clue for the first time. I don't think I've ever played that properly. Oh, this is perfect. I don't think I've ever played that properly myself. Oh, this is perfect. Oh, there's that. I should have played that honor troll that finally came out. Oops. Alright, so I'm bronze. They're gold. And I'm kind of kicking butt. Channel. It goes well with fireball. That's a good answer. So how did that game of Clue go? I, I haven't touched that game in years, and when I first played it, and when I originally played it, I'm sure I didn't play it properly, so... So this little Leech Fanatic that I put in on turn one has been just doing so much work. Fake! That is so fake. Alright, well... They're down to one card. I've got a Trampler. They have one card in hand. I can learn into something. Play that right away. Don't tell me you're gonna counterspell fun over here to scry. Opponent's turn, one more scry off of that, but they have three mana left. Tony Diaphol, bottom it, they're kind of waiting. Alright, got a blocker, but I've got some answer for that. They're going to scry, try to scry into one final answer. Bottom it. What did they get? Removal. And a learn. Okay, fine. And I get a gruff. They're gonna make a 4-4 four four on their turn. Man. Have one more. One more life on them. And paused. Okay. Um. It, it turned out really well. Okay, here's a menace creature. So, I have to block that. Oh, and they're like, never mind. Okay. Did they just feel like they didn't have anything else as an answer, or or what? Because it's surprising that they didn't block that. Or was the or did the creature not able to block? Right? That was just a five four. We would have traded. Then I have an, I have a menace creature. So okay, fine. Guess we got that. Played for the first time and guessed the who, the where, and the what on the second or third turn, so pretty okay. Although 
don't know if you've been playing a puppet myself so far. Was it with, with real people or some sort of virtual... Some sort of virtual setup? I remember in the card game club, people wanted to play also... Actually, did you, you did you ever come to the card game club on the last semester of of the semester? Um, but people wanted to also play card games. Yeah, I've been going first every single time. That's that's good. There's my trap. Ooh, look at that cool art. That's probably Seven McKinnon art, right? Turn one, and it's paused on red. That was probably a... Um, I don't think it was the one mana... damage, right? I mean, it wasn't a shock. Well, yeah, it could be a lightning bolt. Mystical Archive really changes things up. Waiting to the uh, the last possible moment to lightning bolt it. That is some big brain plays. Red players, what can we say? Subtlety is not your strong suit. At least they're at least at least they're getting. Oh, I was gonna say mana screwed, but fine. This opponent thinks forever. Let's go over here to the web browser and we show you this fun photo that I took in 2020. So in one of the trails where I walk in the area, there's the there was this scary um, rustic gate there that said follow me. No, I didn't, because obviously I'm still here, I'm still around here. I did not get captured. And um, that that was an interesting there was an interesting thing there. Let's get back to this totally subtle player right here. Uh, I ran out of um, mana, and I'm not going to play a creature that's going to get fried. So let's see how well this goes. So it's just going to be a staring contest until some point. I'm going to lose that. Yeah, might as well have them use up their spells for the good stuff. So that's what they were hoping to get. It's gonna get destroyed. Still missing line drops, okay. That pledge mage is is uh, subtly one of the best ones, just because it uh, it's kind of very automatic. As long as they do some damage, well, 
they didn't do any damage, so they can't attack. Okay, well, as long as they Magecraft, they can attack, and, you know, it's a 3-3. Three, three. But they already passed their attack phase. Oh, three is good. At least they're tapped out. I'm still looking through my, my pictures over here to try to find... I know where I have it, I think, because I organize. I was trying to find the last game of magic picture here before we went on lockdown. But if I look on my other folder over here... There's that Dusk Master, whatever it's called, that does great stuff. This emergent sequence is just going to be a waste because they're going to kill it. Now it'd be better if I play a land. That's the big brain play. Play a land and then play the sequence because the land will come in as a 2 2, but that's still too small to survive. If I get my next mana, I can exile that Dusk Speaker and then also exile one of their things in the graveyard. This attack is going to be put an instant or sorcery from the graveyard to the bottom and then play the next. So they have their own Rise of Extus, okay. But they have to play it by the end of this this turn, right? If you do, you may, yeah, you have to play them this turn. At least they get exiled if they don't get used. So which of these do I want to get rid of? That one relies on there being stuff in the graveyard. They both rely on stuff being in the graveyard. We get to play that one this turn, and on this one is very similar. So we'll be summoning. That goes away. Yep, missing all of these land drops. seen this photo here but let me show you this photo is the opponent so show you this photo here of
It's me and Mark Rosewater at San Diego Comic Con 20... 2018. So, on that year. So I got back into Magic in 2017. And, um... And then uh, I went to the Magic area in 2017, I think? And then in 2018, I had more of a plan of... Uh, I want to... find more of the magic stuff and then so the and then in 20 27 and 2018 uh, I was there in the magic play area and Mark was there signing stuff and I never quite realized that he is not as tall as I would have thought that's one and then the other photo is this one here, so a little bit of a close-up. What is his shirt thing? Nelson and Nerdoff. Returning at long? Oh, that's uh, Nelson. Yeah, that's um, that's a Daredevil t-shirt. He's, uh, he's into Marvel Comics. So you're not missing too much, the opponent is still just thinking very, very hard. Um, yep, yeah, so that was a photo there. From Comic Con. Here's a photo of... <laughs> when is this from? This is... Uh, this doesn't really have a date. 2017? I don't think that's accurate. But here I am teaching a, a bunch of people to play magic. So the three here in the back, they don't know how to play magic. Uh, the two in the front, they do not know how to play magic, but they haven't played it in a while. And that guy doesn't know how to play magic either. But uh, everyone had, I put together these mono color decks and, and, and I've, I'm playing the mono black one and I'm holding a murder. And so uh, we're all having fun there. All right, let's get back to this game that will eventually end. What are we doing here? Ooh, I finally got something. Okay, so let's exile this and the Urza's Rage. That will take a turn. And I guess I can go get... Six in total. That makes a spirit. Defiant strike. Yeah, let's get back to some other stuff while the opponent thinks. What else can I show here? There's a big pile of... Hey, the, the, this is the very first box of magic that I ever opened up. Ixalan. I, I think I see some sort of foil card back there. Good old Colossal Dreadmaw. Two Burning Suns avatars. Two treasures. Oh, I need a blocker, but they're gonna have well if I if I go to the next phase they're gonna lose their mana. There we go, they lost their mana, haha. <laughs> Alright, so, um... This is not... This creature's not gonna be long for this world. I'll do two creatures just to have... Targets. Because it's getting way too close. They have six, seven, eight, they have... They have eight... 
That's gonna mage craft into treasures. Yeah, I don't even know why. This is not gonna. This is not gonna end well, because first of all, they're gonna make more treasures. Tell me in the chat there, should we just wrap this up? They've got way too much advantage, way too much mana. That has haste. Should we waste our time and keep letting them play, or should we just move on to something else? Because this is not, not going to work out. Should we cling to the, to the belief that every magic player has that just the next card is the card where we turn it all around? Or should we look at reality? We're gonna get the final death from a direct damage spell in red. Is this the only way to maybe survive? Not really, but let's to play this worm. It gains three life, but they've got lots of attackers. Two cards in hand. Tome Shredder can get big. All right, well. Is that that Defiant Strike that keeps? No, that's an expel. So that's seven damage. If I block one of the three twos, it's three, four, five, six, eight, it's seven damage. But then they'll be able to do the final extra damage. They're just gonna swing in. See, they're thinking very hard for no reason to think too hard. Just swing in with everything, and then the one creature that I cannot block will be the final bit of damage that will finish me off. This is not that hard to do. See, the two final damage is going to be a final lightning bolt, or some other very big brain play. <laughs> That's fun. So at least I'll go down swinging right here. All right, so I'll play the final game to wrap up the night. I've been playing four hours and a half. So let's see what we prizes we got here. Then I'll play maybe one final game. And then we'll wrap up. Two boosters. Okay, let's see what's in the boosters. Archmage Emeritus. Cool art on that. Here's another Dina. God's willing, cool new art. Got an uncommon wild card, very cool. And then a mana tithe. Ooh, there's the white counter spell. The card that Mark Rosewater said was a mistake, but they're still printing it. The tyrant's bellow of rage trailed off into a whimper as the last of his fortune escaped his grasp. And that was the Detro Dethroner's Grimoire. Alright, let's play the final game here and then wrap up for the night.
Yeah, they never expect it. All right, so people love this this card. What does she do again? Uh, stuff, but a lot of mana. Okay, so they're gonna do mana ramp. I've got a remorse on turn two. I've got a shadow for when they do their mana dorks. Mana card draw. Ah, this will do stuff. Turn one soul guide lantern, but that'll just be for setting up for card draw later on. Turn two, I will look at their hand. They will rage quit once I destroy a piece of the puzzle. Right, uh, this gets bigger and bigger as you magecraft. Fine. But how about we see what you've got going on? Okay. And stop intervention. Yeah, let's get rid of that intervention. Three mana. Around their third mana, they're gonna they're gonna cultivate to make that elite a little larger, which is fine. Turgrid shadow. Oh, okay, how about that? Yeah, let's just weaken their hand a little bit more. What are they gonna drop? Alright, they kept something, so that's probably land. I need my fourth mana. Cultivate. Okay, perfect for them. Push auto pass. I don't know why the auto pass isn't really auto pass, even though I tell it to auto pass, but it doesn't auto pass. Because they have nothing else to do here. And then they foretell something. Okay. So next turn, they have to have, in order for this stuff to do things, both of those have been foretold, so Jadzi actually won't. But I missed the land drop, so never mind. Okay, fine. Let's see if this works out. If they keep a land in hand, then this won't be amazing. Let's see how this goes. The missing my land drops was really bad. But a mammoth this okay uh that's actually kind of good because my shadow will take care of them both crack that now we're just top decking have the introduction to annihilation. And they're like, never mind. Okay. Well, I guess that's how we want to end the night. Okay, well, that's uh, four hours and 30 minutes stream. Hopefully, people had some fun with what we did um, today. Did uh, We did that one weird event. We did some draft. Showed some photos, did some snack chat. Um, I'm just looking around, where's the cat? Maybe the cat is around somewhere to say goodbye as well. I don't know where he wandered off, but yeah. So we'll end at this, this point. And um, don't forget to check out the video that I just uploaded to YouTube. Uh, the top five, my top five favorite cards, black cards, in Strixhaven, the newest set. Uh, you are welcome. Can't wait until next week. Oh, thanks so much. Really appreciate that. And um, uh, wish a happy birthday to the little one for me. And uh, say hello to all of your family as well. Keep Thanks for hanging out as well. Whoever is still there, Top Hat, if you're there, Chance, everyone that came by. Uh, thanks for coming to the stream as usual. Next time we'll see what events are happening. We'll do some uh, drafting and so forth. 
if you enjoy uh, if you enjoy the uh, the streams and so forth there is that join button right there join on YouTube 99 cents a month to unlock exclusive stuff or you can do the one time on Twitch or or YouTube the the one time cheer whatever it's called so you can uh, purchase a little uh, emote and so forth or if you're over I can do it here on the it'll show up on oh there it does show up on the street on the camera there uh, there's a evil mage pogging it up so you can unlock all that cool stuff for 99 cents so thanks everyone for coming to hang out don't be a stranger on the discord hope you have a good rest of the weekend uh, we'll be in touch throughout the week and we'll do it again next weekend have a good night this has been vm combos